great. So uh, let me okay. Let me make sure the setup is good. Can you guys? Can you hear me, guys? Pretty well. Uh, yes, Kishore, very well. Right. We can hear. Yes, okay. we can hear. Right. So today I'm going to focus on three things. One, first, I want to give you an idea about Python, and we'll go step by step slowly. Then I'll give you a full data analysis, linear regression based. And, uh, and then we'll do some probability. So I realized that a lot of you are actually absolute beginners in Python. So we'll go very slowly, step by step. Then we'll, after I show you Python, how to write a simple program, how to use the libraries and so on, we'll take a short 10 minute break. Then we'll start regression. This is the most widely used machine learning techniques. And I'll, uh, in the last recent few years. So if you know linear regression, you are almost already a kind of a beginner data scientist. And you can in fact go for an interview and then you can say that you can do regression. And there are various forms of regression, but you can actually start becoming a, you know, think that you are a, becoming a data scientist. Then we'll do basics of probability. What is probability? How to start a more systematic way? So let's get started with the first one, Python. <clears throat> Python is an interpreted language. So it is unlike C or Java. Java, so once you write a code or C, Java, or C, C++, once you compile it, so Java goes into bytecode, bytecode, C gets into binary executables and so on. And then you get an executable and then you execute that. <clears throat> so now in Python on the other hand, it is executed line by line. So as the interpreter, Python interpreter you need, it's called by using calling Python. So it will execute one line at a time. And so naturally it is very, uh, it is relative to C++ or Java, it's slower, but Python is very handy. First of all, a lot of work has been done in Python. So there are lots of libraries, lots of different kinds of library. You don't have to compile it, which is easy. And also there is something called Python has a nice shell which I will give you a demonstration of. And Python can be easily integrated with other systems, which is a lot easier to integrate or call libraries and use others library, easy to debug. So there are a lot of advantages. And the syntax is also simple. Syntax is simple. It's almost like pseudocode. I'll tell you what it means by <coughs> pseudocode. So let's first go with that, what is a shell? And that is the first thing you want to play with Python. First, we'll have to understand how this language works. Surprisingly, or <clears throat> for reasons because it's a compiled language, they C and C++ doesn't have any shell that are popular or known to me. So shell is essentially, first let's see how do you get Python? <clears throat> so you need a Python interpreter. In Linux, it almost comes by default. Linux or Mac. In Windows, you may have to install. If you do not know how to install, let me know. You should install a Python interpreter, which is very simple. Maybe you can use Strawberry. No. There are several versions of it. But again, I would recommend that if possible, use Linux. So, so there, after you install, here it's already installed. After install, you have a program called Python interpreter. What we will do is the shell first. So Python can be used for <clears throat> in many different ways. 
to interact. So shell is essentially, it will give you a prompt, like a command line prompt, and there you can write code and examine. So now I'm going to share the screen and talk about uh, the Python shell. <clears throat> Let me share my screen. So I'm going to share this. I hope everybody can see. If you cannot see my screen, it's like a maroon color now, empty screen. Let me know. <coughs> so this is a command line bomb. This is my machine, home Ubuntu. This is the folder I'm in. So let's call Python, Python. So here is a Python shell you got here. See, it says Python 2.7 point uh, this. So Python usually goes when people talk about Python, they talk about either version 2.7, 2.6, or Python 3, 3.6. So you can say Python, if somebody is asking you that, hey, are you using Python 2 or 3? So these, you know, the dots are more of a minor version. The major version changes Python 2 and 3. <clears throat> so we have this shell, you see? Hit enter, I'm hitting enter. There is nothing I have put. So now, what can you do with this? So uh, in order to exit first, say, just one you do second. quit. So you have can to you do hear me? quit here. Can you that one second? I want to do Python 3. If you have installed Python 3, you have to do Python 3. Say it's Python 3.5 at the beginning. So by the way, if you have any question, feel free to ask me now. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kishore, that just one quick question here. Come on. Now, here. I'm going to do the simplest program. Right. And this is a shell that is interactive. So let's say, let's go back to, okay, let's stay with Python 3. Print, hello world. <clears throat> so it printed hello world. So print is a function that is from the Python, Python's standard library. Hello world is you put in quotes, double quotes. Anything you put double quotes, single quotes in Python, it's almost the same. Okay. Or you can even put triple quotes. So string, this is a Python string, hello world. So now I want to do something more. Let's say I want to first, what do we learn when we start learning a programming language? We learn first of all, is there an array? Is in there an integer? Well, first let's see 3.4 plus 2.3. Can we do arithmetic? Yeah, we can do arithmetic. <clears throat> so now we can assign variables. Now note that here I have assigned to variable A the value four. Python. It is not a strictly typed language. It uses duck typing. So that means it guesses. Now let's see what it is, A. Oh, it's four. See, because it looks like a four, it looks like an integer, it will interpret automatically like an integer. Let's do another thing. A, a B is another variable, three. Let's see what is A plus B, seven. Let's do one other thing, a plus b plus 0, 0.0. You see, it's 7.0. That's because we put here something that looks like a float because we put a decimal. So it prints, instead of seven, it prints 7.0. <clears throat> so it uses automatic, uh, it guesses what is the right kind of format it should be or type. So that is integer. So we have seen strings in double, single quotes, um, or even triple quotes. Then we have seen integer. Now this is integer. Uh, this is float, say 4.5. Okay. So far so good. So what about an array? 
So array in Python is defined as like the C equal to say one, three, five, six. This is an array. You put it in square brackets. Let's print it C. So arrays are also printed on the screen in that format. So let's say D is another array. So I'm going to print C comma D side by side. So it printed side by side. So now I want to add them, say. <coughs> print C plus D. So it joins the arrays. So Python is very convenient for using arrays. Give me one second. <coughs> So, so far, any question? Okay. So now we have seen array, we have seen types. What about for loop? It's the most natural thing to learn in a computer um, language. So what I want to do is that print all the elements in C in one line at a time. So this is how you do for loop, for x, in C, you see, if it was in C, you would write like this, say, for, or Java, int i equal to zero to something, i less than length of, I don't know, C dot length, some kind of, this kind of stuff you would do. Something like that you would do, and then parentheses. So here you do not do that. So instead of this parenthesis, to show that it's a, for block, you have to put a colon and indentation. I'll, ex I'll, I'll show you what it means. So when you do X in C, that means it will take one element at a time from the array C, one, three, four, five. And because it's a for loop and Python doesn't use any parentheses, so you put colon. Then there is a triple ellipsis to show that it's a for block. So in order, instead of, Parenthesis, instead of this kind of thing, so you indent it. Any number of indentation you can put, but at least one to mean that everything is lined up under that for block. But make sure that the for here ends with a colon, and it's a very common error you will see. So now I'm going to print x. So what is going to happen in this for loop is x is going to take the value of c's one at a time and print it. Now I have put this calculation uh, that this print should be iterated within the for loop. That's why I put this indentation. So now it did not print anything because it thinks that I'm still typing the for loop kind of uh, block. So I hit one more time. So here you have printed one, three, four, five. So this is how a for loop would use. So now <clears throat> let's see how we do uh, if it was a string. Um, say, you know, CD, F, say. All right. Let's see if we can mix different data types here in Python in the same array. Well, it seems like it's quite flexible. In that. So in an array, you can have different types of values. So that is about your Python shell. This is how you interact with it. So now, what about something more, dictionary or map, um, <clears throat> key value? So I want to first, some of, some of you might not have used dictionary. Uh, I want to explain on the board something about dictionary. Uh, some of you do not program in, you know, some of you program in COBOL and other things. I want to explain you what a dictionary is. So a dictionary, okay, first of all, we need to clear this shell. Honestly, I rarely use shell. So I do not know how to clear, maybe CLS. Is there anything? Okay, so that's not there. So if you do not know anything, there is a lot of information on the inter internet. You should always use it 
uh, how to uh, do that. So let's see Python. Let me uh, do a Google search clear uh, shell, clear screen. Yeah, uh, control L, it says, control L here. So now let me tell you the concept of map. Some of you might not know. <clears throat> so a map is essentially, dictionary is, this is how you define D equal to, say, I'm going to call myself, say, you know, uh, friends, a key. And then I'm going to have an array of names. So a dictionary, you start with a um, curly braces, like <clears throat> and then you can insert what is called key and value. Here, this is a key, friends, and these are values. So in this case, value is an array. So let's print D. So it says that I have in my friends list, that's a, there is a typo. Friends list, I have Ajay and Vijay. Well, these are essentially maps of a name here or a value key. And this is the value. Value could be an array or anything. Let's keep on adding something more. I want to add a, <clears throat> one more new thing. Say, I don't know university they go go to i see in so i'm assigning a new value i'm adding one more key so so far we have only one key called friends so i want to add one more key called university and against that university i want to say only one university name say i don't know bombay university or mumbai university so let's see what happens so you see now, so you have two keys and two values. The first key is university and the second key is friends. Against the first key, you have the value Bombay University and against the friends key, you have Ajay and Vijay. So you can keep adding keys here. <clears throat> you can add keys like this is to initiate a entire new dictionary. To create an empty dictionary, you do say G say I call it, D two say I call it. This is an empty dictionary. So, so let's first create a, a, you know, so this will allow you to retrieve information uh, much quicker because it's a dictionary, it runs in all one complexity time and you can retrieve. For example, let's go to D, print. I can call it say uh, D, oh, university. Here, it's printing out the university. Now, I can even use for loop on the, all the key and values if I want to. So here is one way you can do for key, key is just anything you give here or X, um, say key in D, the dictionary here, colon. Then I want to print indentation, print key name. So I have two keys, university and friends. So then, I'm going to also, I can print values as well. Key comma values you can do. Then you can do D iter items. Colon. It tells you the values as well. Okay. So iter items. So it did not want, let's see. Oh, we can do another way. A better way actually that's not the, that's one way of python 2 syntax but let's see here uh, key in d actually key this is a better way to it was so you see d anything that you want to access against that key 
the within square bracket you put key <coughs> so um, so this is how you can interact through a dictionary so um, you can use it you can create you know dictionary within dictionary for example I can create here let me take an example where I will take within dictionary just like those who of you have done you know different kinds of other programming languages like or seen json so here i can even instead of have another key called friends another key i'll call it key pair key so let's say the key is a nested i call it so inside nested i'm going to have a value which is a, a dictionary again and that dictionary will have another key called uh, level 2 level 2 key and he can have a value 4 say so let's see how it looks so here is what it shows it's a dictionary it has two keys nested and friends friends have the value this array nested has a value which is another dictionary which has one key so i can in fact add another key here level two key four so something else let's say d so let's see print d ah i have to put single code or double code because it's a key here so so i'm going to show you key value nested has one dictionary called level key so there suppose i want this is printing the entire second level dictionary so you can have dictionary within dictionary so if i want level two key then it should print four four maybe i can insert a new element there so then I would do in that level instead of I have to give a new key because if I do something here it will override that four say I put five because I overrode it but I want to add a new one so then I have to say key two say six so let's see again what happens what are the keys here let's again look at D what so D now have two keys at the top level friends and nested nested has an, for value it has a new dictionary and that dictionary has two keys level two key two that has a value six and level two key that has a value five so you can have this nested structure of mixed different kinds of structure and that makes python much easier for example those who do c you would have to do this void pointer constant type casting so here the conversion is done automatically. I think there might there is a few. Oh no. I see. I have some questions here. Oh, how do we check type of a variable in Python? <coughs> would uh, would you recommend two or three? As far as I know, there are some syntax changes in both versions. So um, some of some people like you should do three now for some time python 3 was not very um, kind of stable and now it's stable and still a lot of codes still use python 2 but you should switch to python 3 so now another thing is that how do you check the type of a variable in python so let's see how we um, do that <clears throat> print type of oh there is nothing no call type so we have something called okay let me clean this screen clear the screen okay so the function is called type type d so this tells you it's a class of dictionary class so these objects are dictionary class so now let's again print the let's see 
what is the type of the object or the data that is under this key called friends? I would expect it should be a list, or list or array in Python. <clears throat> so let's see type D uh, friends. class list. What about the other key at the same level? It's a dictionary. What about type within the dictionary, the level two, E2? So it's an integer. So it's a class integer. So that's how it's but I want to also um, explain one other important concept here. List completely. Python lists are very interesting. <clears throat> Let's take a list. We got, I think, A. Let's see if it still persists or not. Oh, no, this is, uh, I think we have one C. Okay, let's take C. So there is an interesting thing called C if you put, so this is, zero, one, two, three. So that's how Python starts from zero, the indexing. So C zero is one, C one is three, so on. So what if I want to array a slice an array or take a sub list <clears throat> slicing? In Python, there is a very convenient way. Zero to say one, this means I want an array from this array, subarray, that starts with zero index and something less than one. So in this case, it will be just one element. <clears throat> if I put two, then one and three, because zero, one. You, you should not have the right one. This is just a convention, three. Or you can start, let's make C a little longer, our array. Um, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven, twenty-one, one, so on. Okay. <clears throat> so D said three is, it should be zero, one, two, three, five, five. So I want suppose from seven through twenty-one. So how do I know what it is? So I should do zero, one, two, three, no, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So I know that five, six, seven, eight. So five to eight. Because eight is not included. So this is how you access Python list. And this is a very convenient way of uh, accessing list. So what about, I want to say access from five till the end. And I don't know where the end is say. <clears throat> so then you say index of five and nothing, colon, leave it empty. So index of five is what? Zero, one, two, three. I think three, colon. This is how to. So now another in interesting thing is this minus one. So that means suppose you want to remove the last three elements. So you put colon, you see, minus three. So it has taken from the right side negative. So it will eliminate, it will give you an array that has eliminated the first three. So you got one, three, four, five, seven. And now to know the length of the array, alien is the function. So far, any question on uh, on this? Okay. okay. I um, so now, <clears throat> so this is about Python shell, uh, and you should now if statement. If is simply if say a equal to say two, or let's say, let's create an array and do a chord, explain that um, control. Oh, okay, 
So suppose I have an array and two, four, three, and I want to print on my screen all the even numbers here. Uh, so I'm going to run a loop and check inside the loop if the number is even, I'm going to print it, otherwise I'm going to skip it. So first, I need to learn how to iterate. For x in a, so this is my first loop, so let's see what it would print. Print x, okay? I actually need the even numbers. So I can use the arrow, back arrow, to retrieve the previous commands. Okay, here, now I want a if statement. Because the, the if statement is also part of the for block. So I'm doing this. If x, this is the modulo division, mod 2 equal to 0. This is how you write it. Well, if statement also has colon like this. For if both of them need. Now I will print within this. Because I'm going to print inside that if that is print inside that block of if, here, you have to be another block. Inside, there should be an indentation from this if I, a couple of characters, it could be any. Some people like tab, I use four spaces. So let's say, so here, I'm going to loop through the array of elements. For every element, I'm going to compute the divided by modulo di division of two, if it is even, then I know it is zero. If it is odd, it's one. So now <clears throat> I'm going to print out the even numbers. One more, four to six. Okay, that's great. So I want to actually print the odd numbers too and also state that this is odd, this is even. Here again, I use the back arrow for and uh, the if statement, if even, so then I want to print even. Um, and print the value of x. Now I want to actually do else. Else, this is how you do, also colon here. Print <coughs> odd. Enter, enter. So now you see <clears throat> this if, the block, it has to match the align with the else here at the same level of indentation from here. I think this is three characters. Here also it's three characters. So that means they're at the same level. So now I'm adding here. So now you naturally you know that, you know, it's not very nicely printed. There is another thing you can do for string formatting when you print. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to focus on the even ones. Even. This string, you can actually make one string. Format X. So what I'm going to do is that the string, you can say that pass a value here. This curly bracket within a string means print this and get the value from here. So it prints nicely in that sense. So let me show you one more thing here. You can do even add two. Say I wanted to add say, uh, you know, the next value, next even is, next larger even number is, is say, I want to add two to that. So I'm going to do here format X plus two here. So you see the point. Um, so that is how you can do uh, formatting and printing. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, Kamal, any Rajesh? Yeah. I had a very, very basic question. I, I'm getting it what ah. you are explaining actually. Let's see. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Kishorida, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Hello? 
think Hello. there is a problem with the voice. Okay. Uh, can you guys say something? Can you hear me? Uh, hello, uh, Kishorda, can you hear me? Kamal here? Hello? Okay. Neil, can you hear Let's us? Let's continue with this a little longer. Um, and <clears throat> Let me see if I Uh, give me a, let us see, there is some sound problem. Yeah, I am not able to hear us, I uh, hear you guys, but let me see this. I should be able to fix this problem. Yeah, for some reason, I was not able to hear you, but I, it should be fine. I think uh, something was wrong with that thing. So let me continue and let this, this problem should be fixed. I think it might have run out of battery, yeah. Okay, so now, <clears throat> so far so good. So you can type questions there on the chat and I'll pick up from there um, if you, so I can read you guys, hear you guys actually. <clears throat> so next question is that this shell has some limitations. It's hard to debug, it's just for quick testing. Say <clears throat> Python has this concept of something called packages or libraries that you use. And I'm going to show you how to actually start debug. So, and there was another question is that, how do you install a new package in Python? So the way you install new package is called say pip install. It's most of the time it's you on the Python shell itself you can type or in Linux, pip install the name of the package that you'll find on the internet. Say we need a scipy tool. It's a scientific calculation software. So if you install it, you see it's already satisfied so there is nothing to do. But if it was not installed, it, you will see that it's installing. It will show, uh, automatically pull from the Python code repository and install it for you. In this case, install. So that is for Python 2 for default. If I want 3 for Python 3, so same library will not be compatible for library Python 2 and 3. So you have to make sure you install both separately. And later I'll show you how to use virtual environment. So pip3 is not installed. So Python trees. So Linux, you do this, sudo, sudo apt install Python tree, pip3. So it looks like it's actually already in the newest version I have. So now, <clears throat> how do you do programming? So what you do is you get a tool called PyCharm. So let me show you the share my screen where PyCharm is. Um, let me, sh I'll share a commun uh, edition. Let me get you to that, yeah. So I'll share my screen uh, <coughs> with Pipe, uh, share my screen. So there are some 
Oh, okay. So share the whole screen. So let's see. Python. This is what you need. Python, a PyCharm, JetBeans PyCharm. This is the logo. I will send you the you know link. Um, I can even copy, I'll send you the link how to install it. And there are lots of videos how to install it. If you get confused, let me know. And you should use the community version. It's free. Uh, this is you know you should stay away from it because you may not you may have to pay. So you can install for Windows, Mac, or Linux. So for Linux, it was simple. I just download it and I put it in a folder. I'll show you where I put my PyCharm. Py, uh, I will get. So I will start Sorry, uh, we are unable to see your desktop. So I have put them in a folder called PyCharm. This is where I have put. And when, this is for Linux. So similarly, Mac also has similar situation. You may have to install it as an application. But once I go to the bin folder, there is a file called pycharm.sh. And that is what we want to execute. Pycharm. So you wait a minute and then it will bring up a screen. <clears throat> I think I should be able to hear you now. Oh yeah, there is a message. Uh, oh, okay. So there is a message on the screen. So let me first make sure. Okay, I should be able to hear you guys now. Okay, so there is one is able to see your screen. Uh, it's in the hang mode. Okay, uh, let's see, close. Okay, stop sharing and I'm going to share again. Uh, share screen, entire screen. Oh, okay, yes. Now you should be able to see when I type PyCharm. So let me show you what I type. Again, uh, this is not important. Okay, so here is what I type. I type PyCharm in this folder and I got the PyCharm. So then it shows on my here screen on bottom left corner, this is where. And this is what we were doing last time. Okay, so now we are going to go through a simple exercise today. The exercise will be, we will take a file Let's read the file and we'll count the number of times each word appears. That's the, going to be the demo. <clears throat> so I think my voice should be active now. Uh, guys, can you say something? Somebody, Komal, Rajesh? Yeah, hi, Kishorita. Can you hear us now? I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Basic question was this to start up with, like, how do we install and all those things? Because you started with the commands, right? Yes. So the first thing is, so now that's clear. Yeah. Uh, so we have to install some, um, some installables, right? Yep. This, so uh, this is a what, what operating system do you use? Windows. It's mostly Windows. Windows. So you can, uh, I took you to the, I will send a link to the PyCharm okay. website and also okay. send you a few videos. So all okay. you need to do is that download that bundle okay. in PyCharm. You should select the one for Windows. There are for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let me actually show you one more time here. Um, so, sorry, sorry. I know this is a very basic question, but really I'm no totally new to the, yeah, here, sorry see, for that. 
my screen so uh, this, this, no this is id right we are talking about this python is the id, the ID. ID. Yeah. so but but how do we have install uh, python so python that i can start? yes 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 so that yes, is a yes. python interpreter right the python yes, interpreter yes. correct for windows i will send you a link also that is a good perfect question you raised i'll send you instructions on how to install let yeah. me write down this write this down right away before i um, yeah, yeah. I, I I know it's a very basic question, but sorry, no, I like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Python interpreter and ID. Yeah, so this is the ID. So yeah, for Windows, um, I will send you a link, and you can download from there, and then instructions how to. So for for Unix, it is by default. Do we have this? So uh, for Python, comes in most Unix systems by default. Okay. Uh, or even in Mac. It comes uh, okay. without doing anything, um, okay. but the ID is not. It's not going to come by default. Right, right, right. Got yeah. it. Thank you. So no problem. So now what I'm going to do is uh, let me stop sharing for a second and come to the board. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any question now, is a good time to ask before I do the next Python, you know, assignment here. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to any web page, say CNN, copy a whole bunch of text, and I'm going to actually put it in a text file, right? Text file, because in machine learning, you will use a lot of natural language processing later. It is important, these things. Uh, <clears throat> then I'm going to count how many words are there, different words, and how many times they appear. Say hi appear, uh, you know, um, GH hi appears say four times, you know, world appears 27 times, you know, US appears four, five times, India appears so on. Then what we will do, we will make it caseless, case, less make it lower higher and see how we can do that so first i'm going to share my screen and create a file and then i will show you how to use the id to run it and that's where we will uh, for today we'll stop uh, programming in python at that point so that you can do some assignment okay so let me share my screen again <coughs> Share my screen. You should see my screen. Yeah, you'll see in a second. Uh, not yet. Okay. Stop sharing again. Share, share my entire screen. Oh, share. Yes. Yes, you would see my screen. Now let's go to CNN. Uh, I don't know CNN. Yeah, some for some reason. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. Do you have a question? You need to recharge. You can leave it after that. Okay. So, here I am going to take say. Okay, whatever this article is, I am not worried. I'm just going to yeah. copy here and put it in a file. So I'm going to open another terminal window. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so I'm going to put it in my folder, home folder, which is home Ubuntu call it text.txt. I'm just pasting it. And I'm going to go to back to the annoying thing. Uh, CNN will start. Okay. Okay. So I just got my word, uh, these, but this is too nice though. Uh, I wanted something that is, Okay, 
I empty the file with, I want to make it a little bit difficult for us. Okay, this is good. So I have my text here. <clears throat> I save it, I call it text.txt text here. And now I'm going to go back to my, this code and see what I can do with this. Let's start fresh. First, I have to learn how to read a file. Then I have to get line by line. So first, this is how you read a file. Say, so let's say I want to put the file name, let's call it, I don't know, this is the full path. What is my full path? Home, Ubuntu. This is my file name. Great. So let's remove these breakpoints. So what you do with, this is how you open a file. This is the Pythonic way. I'll tell you what it means by Pythonic way. Python helps have some style of programming and that we should stick with. Say, if you create, if you want to open a file, file name, let's call it file name. And what do you want to read it as? As read mode, not write mode, as FP. So FP is the file handler now. Because we are working with this file open, anything you want to do with the file, as long as you are reading or things, it should be in, within that block. So that means it has to be indented. Let's see now, print out, print. Oh, I cannot do anything now. So now I can do one thing, get the lines, all the lines in a list. So fp read lines, there is a command, there is a function called read lines. It will read all the lines in the file. Let's print it, all the lines. You will get a list of lines. Let's see how we, when we execute it, what do we get? Oh, this is what we got, the output. Not very useful, but you know, maybe I should print here something, I don't know, line begin. Oh, so this is all one line it printed, fine. Maybe I can have two lines just to show you that. Oh. <clears throat> so it printed, oh, I see, okay. So it printed the whole line as one because I got all the lines. This is line ends. So now what I want to do is that, instead you can in fact read even one line at a time from the file handler. So in that case, you would use file or line in FP. So you can pretend that as if FP file handler can iterate through one line at a time through the file. And because it's the for loop is inside, so I have to put an indentation. So let's see what we get here. Okay, we got, and print by default puts a new line on it. So because this already has a line ending, that's why you are seeing this additional gap. Because that new line character, as you know, you know, this appears in each, so it's printing uh, this new, and then print itself adds one more. So in order to remove that, there is a function called strip. It removes all the empty spaces and things like that, cleans up the line. It's a built-in function. Let's run it. See, it has gone. So you might ask, what is line? Well, let's print type of line. What is type of line? Type line. You would expect it's a, let's see what it is. So it's a class string. So these are all strings. So each line from the file is a string. Any questions so far? So fine. So I'll go ahead and show you how to count it now. Well, this is so far so good, but I want to clip all the words one by one. What do you think about this idea? This is an idea, and this is how you write comments in Python, okay? This for every line you can put. So my idea is that first store the dictionary, create a dictionary, dictionary variable, where 
um, for each word, I will have a counter. Say, you know, hello, suppose is a word. So there will be a counter. So it will, uh, my goal is to create a dictionary of like this. Hello, world. Or, so in that example, I said, um, comma, USA appears uh, two times, so on. This is just an example, and dictionary comes to a close here. I'm going to create a dictionary variable like this, and then this will help me count. So for against each word, I'll keep a counter and keep updating the counter. So the goal is to first iterate line by line, one line at a time, then split each line into different words, and then for each word, I start counting. So let me start here. <clears throat> so read one line at a time. These are comments I'm going to write. Some people write comments like this, Python in triple quotes like this, inline comments it's called. Read one line at a time. Great. So once we read lines, then I want to do is this, split, each line into words. Great. So this is how you do. Words is equal to line. Line is a string and you say split. That it, it means it will split by space. But you can put any delimiter and split by tab or anything. So here, split. Let's see what we get. Words, I should call it. Not words. In words. Let's see what we get. Uh, maybe I can print here something more. Print line, uh, I don't know, one, say I. So where I is say one, zero. And each line you read, I, you know, after that I increase it by one. So to keep track of the lines. Let's see what I get. So it will print the name of number of the line and each line will be split into words. Maybe I should print the line as well. <clears throat> line is right. Let's see. Okay, so let's examine what we get here. So what have we got? Line zero, I. So, oh, here is a mistake I made, see? I should have written format I, otherwise it will not come here. It will think it's a separate string. This is an error, so let's run it. Okay, so here it, what it is. Uh, okay, so line zero, and this is the line, you see? This is the line, and this is, after splitting it here into words. So you will get it in an array of words, list of words, list or array, same thing. This is the list of words. This is the line two. Uh, it, everything starts from zero, of course, in Python. This is the line and this is the list of words. Nice. So now I'm going to start counting. So for the first line, so I'm going to comment these out. So we have got the words. List of words in the line. Here it is. Now I'm going to start printing each line, each word in a for loop. Let's see what I get. Word, I call it in words, words. <clears throat> and I'm just going to print word. Uh, and I want to give you the line number as well, for which line number. It will print, also this is a word counter. And I'm going to keep track of counting the word. You can write like this, or you can write like in C and Java, this sort syntax, J plus one. So I'll write in the simple way, J plus one. So I'm going to put the line number here 
and word here, J and the word. Let's see what we get. And I'll stop printing this line. Uh, yeah, I can print the lines. It's not a bad thing. Let's look at it, what I got here. So this is line, it did not increase. Something is wrong. How come line is always zero? Words are okay, I'm getting it. I'm not getting anything about line number. So we must have made a mistake. So we forgot to increase our counter. So you see these tabs, indentation, how these nice lines match up. So this is where it gives you an indication. How you have to align. This is at that level, right? I equal to I plus one. Let's run it again. Now it looks like we have the four, five lines starting from zero. Here you see. Oh, this is a line typo. Okay, that's fine. We can live with that typo for now. This is the line this week. So you see, line zero, word one, line zero, second word, and this is what is going on. So we are able to print them. So now, so what now? You know, let's fix this typo. Line, okay. So now what I want to do is that for each word, I want to create a dictionary where I want to do. So I'll create a counter here, word count. I'll call it word count. And it's an empty dictionary initially. So now every time I see a word, I want to insert the word into the dictionary. Right, word count word equal to well, first I have to have the word. The first time I see the word is going to be what? One time. But how will it increase? Every time it will be one. It will override the value. So let me still, after I do that, let me still print out the count of the words. This will keep happening, okay? First you have count the word. But this is a very wrong way of counting. I should increment it, right? For dot word, I'm just adding. So what is happening is that this is a dictionary. I'm using the word itself like a key and the value is the number of times I have seen. So all I'm doing is that incrementing it. But there is a problem and I'll show you, this will crash. But then my goal would be to print out the counts at the end of the day for word or key, you can call it key in word, word count. I'm going to print out. Between key and word count is key. This is my goal. Oh, there is a typo, word count. Word, I should say word counts, that's to me. You see how it is showing you the errors uh, when it's highlighted. There is a lot of things you can do with PyCharm. If it makes programming development easier. I'm not even using any of them. So let's run it. And I will tell you that it will crash and I'll tell you why it crashes. It crashed it. So it says there is a key error in this line. You see, word counts key error in line number 31. Line number 31. Well, the first time you arrive at a word, you don't have anything to add on to. Initially, the dictionary is empty. So you have to check, is it the first time? If it is the first time before maybe seeing the word, just make it to zero and then immediately increase it by one, right? So this is how you do it. I'm writing a comment here. If word seen for the first time, insert. Insert it into the dictionary. How do I do that? How do I check if it's there or not already? You do this, if word is word counts word counts word equal to zero. 
Well, this is not the point. If it's there, what's there to make it zero? If it is not there, this is how you do Python not. <coughs> this means, is this word already in the dictionary? And this is the opposite. No, it's not. If it's not, insert it with zero. Of course, the first time around, this will be executed and never be after that for that word. And you will increment it up to one. That's why we do start with zero. So that because you will immediately execute this. So now let's run it. What do we get? Well, we got some numbers here. Wow, so everything is only one time. I'm surprised actually. Okay, mail for example, massive. Let's make it two words somehow. Go into the file, say, oh, somewhere I will add a word called mail, say. I don't know another line. Whatever. Right. I'm adding it. Let's see if it shows up or not. Let's see. Oh, it did not show up. So something is wrong then. So I'm doing the word counts and increasing the word. If, it is, if the word is not in word counts, then increase it. And um, let's see. Okay, so let's see if that word is at all captured. New, maybe. Okay, mail. So it is obviously something is wrong here. It's not taking this. It's not counting it. Let's examine the code again here. So if the word is not here, words, then you insert it and make it zero and add it. Okay, let's type here. Print word inserted. And then I'm going to turn off this, this. Okay, sure. So let's run it again. What did we get? Okay, word inserted, word inserted, and there is some error here. Word inserted, yeah, so this is not required. This is, I can do this same format. So I'm showing you the, pay, the process of debugging and playing so that you see more and more feature of this. So inserted A, inserted massive, inserted massive twice. So why is it that it is still not counted as two? It's somehow being overwritten, right? As we see here, mail thing, the count is not, the count is off. So it's, it says that not in words, then it's, it's yeah so now let's see if this is executed twice or not <clears throat> okay so let's let's see the world mail and massive they were supposed to be printed only once let's see what happens so you comment it out yeah so here you are inserting the word here if the word is not there, word inserted. Massive, word inserted is massive. So what do you think is going on here? So it is coming twice. So I am seeing it twice and it did not help me. So let's see what it is. Okay, so now the way you debug is this. Uh, how do I debug here? So if this is the error massive, Somehow I have to start debugging. So what I'm going to do is that, this is how I'm going to do it. If word, you can do massive. So I don't want it to debug all one line at a time. It's too boring. So word, so I'm going to do. 
So if it is massive, then I'm going to print it and I'm going to put this debugger. So you hit this debugger sign, this uh, like a hairy, like a crab or something bug. It's like a bug symbol. And then you run it. So now you see, I am with the word massive. You see, I'm highlighting it. And now I want to see what happens here. I will go step by step now. In order to go step by step, you can use these lines here. Step into, step over. Step into means it will go into that function. This is step over. You will go one line at a time, F8. Let's see what happens. And let's see what is our word counts even. Word counts is that dictionary. How does it look? Here, you see, word counts. This is the word counts. All this thing, and these are the values. This is the index. This is, do not worry about this complicated. This is like a dictionary hash. So, wow, this is uh, L, M. Do I have massive here? Male, I have one. Okay, massive, no. Let's go one line at a time. Here, is it here? It is not here. So, because it's not here, I'm going to do the first word count. Now, let's see if massive has got in. See, it's zero. But because I have just seen immediately, it's going to be incremented to one. There you go. It should be one now. And rightly so, because we have just seen him. Massive is one. So soon, we are going to see massive again. This is, what is this word? Uh, let's see. Oh, wake up. Uh, I don't care. That's not going to impact us. Uh, I, we, that is not important to us. So now I want to go all the way to massive quickly. So I'm going to again do run like this so that it continues or there are other choices that you can call it continue running. Let's see, resume program. It will run until it hits the next breakpoint. Ah, here is the next one. Let's look at it. Massive has already value one. Now let's see why is it not increasing it to two. Let's go slowly. Step. Is the word is there? Well, the word is there. It should not be true because the massive word is already in word counts. Here you go. So it's not true. So it is going to skip it. Oh, so something happened. It thinks that it is not equal to massive actually. String. It looks at it as a different word. That is interesting. Uh, M A S S I V M A S S I V. Okay, so it, that's why it resets it to zero and starts counting. So one thing is that look at the mail. The problem is that mail could have been counted twice, but there is a comma. So I fail to remove the commas here. Okay, so it thinks that first of all, it did not have massive, massive, and. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think I think there's some logic problem. See, if you go to the if, then it should be else, right? See, if yeah. and else, right? If not in the word, then do it this else. Word count is equal to that. So else is missing there. So that is the reason every time we are getting one. So this if, yes, if and then it should be else. No, it, this if is like a on the way if. Hey, if Correct. you have not Ex seen it, so think about this way. This you assume that. Just count it anyway, right? You'll see it and count it. Correct. You have not seen, which can happen only in the first time you initialize on the way. Agreed. So, but there's no need of else because this will be, when you hit this statement, if this word was never seen, it will be just initialized on the way like zero. Like, hey, I have initialized zero. Don't worry kind of thing. Yeah, I think it should be if word not in word counts. If word not in not in word counts, counts. yeah. If not word, word if word not in word counts. So yeah, uh, here I'm putting a not here. That's why. No, it just. Uh, uh, if word not in word counts. Can, can, uh, can you just change can you see, it? That? Can sure. You Let's see try that it. Word? Yeah, I like it. Let's change it, uh, and we'll play with it. Yes. Give me a second. I'll just okay. Okay, great. Let's try that. Um, 
I will stop the debugger and run it again and make sure that we also print massive, okay? Uh, can you make the input file smaller? Uh, maybe we just take an input file with four words and then try sure, it. Sure. Like it will be easier to debug. Give it, debug easy, easy. Sure, yeah. Maybe an input file only with mal messy for three or four times. That should be Sure, let's good. see. Yeah, that is good. Massive. Uh, okay, so we have massive twice. I'll reduce this further. Let's stick with uh, in a little bit even. What about that? It's good. Yeah. We'll try from here. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, great. I'm seeing a lot of enthusiasm now. Um, so okay. So here, print mail counts. It uh, it does not. It did not see mail. Maybe I'll just add the mail. Oh, it is there. That's because of this comma it thinks you know mail comma is a word but uh but anyhow we'll live with that and add it to what it likes yeah because and i'll I show you using just... regular expression how to remove that okay great so word inserted mail word inserted massive uh word inserted massive so there is something strange right so i want to go and change it if word not in Let's see, does it take not in? So this is not a, it's a, it doesn't, it's a syntax error. It's essentially this not you always put in front. Like, you know, this is the word, this, this is what it means actually, not the opposite. So I'm doing actually the not as you suggested. So let's try to understand. There is something interesting and it could be mostly Unicode problem actually. Uh, maybe we'll find out. So, um, go ahead. Yeah, I think, uh, can you just try if word not in IN membership oh. operator? So, if word... If word not in, word counts? So, not in this case, uh, here, as you see, uh, it gives... No, no, it's in, no, no, instead of is, it is in. In, in, I, not in. Not in. Oh, in, I see. Okay. Yes. It should work. Hey, was it uh, in or is all along? I forgot now. It maybe it, this is the problem. Yeah, uh, I think it was is. So that was the typo. Yeah, it should be in, right? Yeah, yeah it should be in. Sorry, yes. it was a typo. Yes, or you uh, right ways to do this. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, okay, so massive is two, right here. Oh my God! This is right. Yeah, got it. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Thank you, guys. This is good. Uh, now, let's think about what about this comma? How do we remove? It would be really great if I could get rid of all the commas, you know. Uh, it would make life a lot easier and cleaner. So what, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you next, maybe uh, for today, we can stop here for Python. Or if you guys are too excited, I can go on with Python or you would like me to switch to regression after a 10 minute break. What would you like, guys, are in a mood for? Python. Python. Uh, okay, so people seem to like Python. For now, then we'll switch to linear regression. So why don't we take about exactly 10 minutes break and then we'll do Continue with this, and I'll teach you something more advanced and interesting. Okay. okay. And this piece of code, anyway, you'll be sharing it, right? I will okay. share with you these codes. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. Really like kind of a reference here. Thanks, yeah. thanks. Okay. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay.
Yeah, so there is a equation. Yeah. Oh, we cannot write ternary statement in Python. Oh, let me see. Okay, guys, are you guys uh, back? Neil? Yes, uh, yeah, it's fine, you can go ahead. Right, so I can go a little further. There is a demand that we can write. Some are interested in <clears throat> coding and some are interested in the next topic. That's fine. Um, okay, so I will quickly go through how to create uh, classes and how to use it. That will be a lot of things covered in Python for today, actually. Um, so let me now <clears throat> go back to the code that I was doing. And now I have got my reading glasses. Hopefully I will not be confused with in and is. But let's get back our, get our old CNN print. Maybe this time we take it from some other magazine, the whole text. Uh, maybe, uh, you know what, Russian Times is better. We don't have full of advertisements, something easier. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to copy some text. These days, most of the text is all about ad, hardly there is. Okay. I'm looking for a large article. Um, Wikipedia would be better. Uh, Right, we can take some text from here. And we will make a class now that can do our text analytics. Here I go. And some are <clears throat> not even words, confusing things. So now let's run our code that we fixed together. This we don't need to worry about anymore. Uh, we don't need to worry about this uh, printing. We will just print out the word counts. Okay, so this is because that file does not have mail, the word. Okay. So here are all the counts. Some are two, reference is two, Python is three times. And there are some crazy words that we don't need. <clears throat> so first, let's see, look at the crazy things that I would like to clean. I would really like to clean anything that is not alphabet. Uh, yes, I would like to, and then I would like to clean this up. Yeah, these things should be going. So maybe these reference, uh, let's see one by one what it means, uh, how to create Okay, so this is, we don't care about printing this. Okay, so first let's remove these back quotes and anything that is not alphabet, we should completely remove them. Any word that has no alphabet. So the way we do is that here is how we, here we can do the filtering. Is the word meaningful at all? <clears throat> Does it have any alphabet? How do I know? So there, that brings us to the concept of something called regular expression. In order to use regular expression, so regular expression is a compact way of representing patterns of strings. So Python has a module called import re, regular expression. So first let's remove all the words that have no alphabet at all. Then I'm going to remove all the non-alphabetical characters from each word. So now in order to do that first, remove any word without any alphabet. Okay, so first I have to define a regular expression. How do I do that? So here is how you do it. 
if not regular expression this is how you do it uh, or, or is, if not re search here you see it's the pattern and string so search is this pattern you always start with a r separate from the thing separate what, what do i need a to z a to z so that means anything from little uh, lowercase a to z and uppercase a to z at least one word i expect at least one of these letters i expect that word to have if not i do not care <clears throat> right in the word this is very important that regular expression and because it's if and i want to skip this loop you can click continue so continue will make it actually skip the rest remaining part of the all the way you see this for loop goes from here to here not this is outside of this for loop this is one line at a time i am processing so it will move on to the next word in the list of words this continue so then i should not see this at least implementation and it should be python right is it true yeah i do not see that anymore so that is so far so good but i also want to make sure that these things are also gone i don't want anything that is in each word i don't want anything this square bracket not alphabet i want to remove them so first let's remove this square bracket and i want to show you a pattern so these are essentially a pattern right i want to remove these kind of patterns square bracket or numbers <clears throat> so here is how you define a regular expression pattern pat r e say r e compile so what you can you can define it and you can use it quickly to see r i want to have that type of pattern digits anything that has to do with digits d for backward slash d means digit 0 through 9 plus means any number of them they uh, they should be gone anything that has to digit it should be gone so then i would like to remove square brackets or anything that is not kind of a alphabet so I'm doing the brute force way to teach you actually. Uh, I call path one, let's call it path two. So I'm going to remove all the square brackets. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Kishore, yeah, quick question. The R which we have uh, put it in the front of pattern is uh, mandatory to put for regular expression <clears throat> in Python? Yes, it is a, a, a part of the syntax to say it's a regular expression. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, so okay, so let's see let's first the i will show you something interesting let's say all these patterns i want gone the digit should be gone then i will also remove the square bracket we'll keep it more and more uh, sophisticated then you would see why i'm doing it so what i'm going to do here is word pattern one uh sub maybe uh sub here is the thing sub replace with this this string and it will replace that pattern with that string pattern sub replace uh, replace because path one is a regular expression you can get this sub function so replace with what actually replace with something i just want to remove it completely right and the string is the word and that's the new word is coming in new word will be cleaned out of this so anything that you come across these digits it will be replaced with it will be emptied out you see they're gone but we have all these funny symbols and then we have to remove comma and square so let's see if i can add more and i would be it would be very boring then we'll find a smarter way this is how you do back quotes path two right so i'm going to remove this and then you will see that soon we will be like uh, this is not a very inefficient way 
<coughs> path three. I'm simply replacing them with this. Um, At three, by then it would have cleaned all the digits, all the quotes, and all the commas with this. You see, all the commas and quotes are gone, right? Uh, which is good, but there is a problem here. First of all, um, these double quotes are there. Instead, what I'm going to do is that process them all in an array. I'll call it regular expression, reg. Uh, remove patterns, I will call it remove, remove patterns. See, instead of storing in a variable, why can't I store them in a list, list of regular expression and I'll fire them one at a time. Let's write them down here. Instead of doing the same thing in one by one manually, here is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so what are we at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kishu, and can we like put all this, now we have separated into three lines, so can we put all those uh, patterns into one single all line? In, yes, you can put in all in one line, yes. No, 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 not like that. I mean, in into the compile parameter. Yes, you can do that. You can do or, or, or. There is a or facility. I'll show you that. Okay. Yes, that's yeah. a good question. So remove paths, right? So let's do this. Why not we do for loop? Or, or remove path in remove paths. Is that right? All I'm going to do is that. Right? It, it will fire all of them in a loop. If it's there, it will clean that up. It keep, keep applying on the same word one after another. Yeah, looks not bad. Let's remove dot and dot as well and back quotes and see if we can do your idea, regular expression. I'm going step by step so that we know what we are doing and we can reproduce. Uh, you can see the different styles you can use Python on. Single quote and dot and then let's see if we can put all of them together. Uh, here I have to put comma, here I have to put comma. So this is an array of regular expression. Look, here you have used the library. For example, C++ did not have this regular expression and it was a pain in the neck. But uh, Python, these standard, these libraries are very good actually. Very, are we seeing anything bad here? Other than, I don't see anything, uh, yeah. Yeah, key and word counts yeah so this is what we are printing key and word counts 415 did we do anything here i think we are printing something else here uh, this is not important to us now we know these things in this section <coughs> okay 415 something didn't uh happen here so something was wrong here was removed. Ah, where is the error? Look at this. In the regular expression world, there is a page I will send you guys called Python regular expression string. Python regular expression symbol. And that dot is dangerous. You should see these symbols. They mean shortcuts. Dot, it means anything. Unless you put it in a square bracket, that means exactly itself. You see the full stop that I wanted to remove? And I put dot. This dot in regular expressions means any character. But then it is removing everything. There's nothing to do. So you have to put dot is special, okay? You have to put it in square bracket. That means literally, this is what I mean. You see, they showed up. So is there anything that you would like to clean up here? I'm going to create a class out of this. So it looks like we have create, cleaned most of it. Maybe this uh, parenthesis is there and maybe we can do all of them at once as you suggested. 
these square brackets are there. Okay, uh, and I'm going to done to show you how to. Why not I remove all of them together, as you said, any of them? One way to do that is this. Square bracket means something special in, means something literal. These are symbols I use. This means one of them, this type. So let's do this. Remove all these brackets. Remove all. These are, these round brackets are special, important. Um, they, 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 they are because they need to be escaped because they are, and then we have this as well. And we have this as well. Does it help us? Let's see. But then there is also another thing I need to teach you. Uh, I will not remove hyphen for now. This is it. What we have done is created a dictionary and the word counts. But this is very annoying. Who wants to create all these things I would rather like to give you the list of words and create all of it on the fly. So what I can do is that create a class for doing this analytics instead of creating this. So all I'm going to give him is a file and he will do the work for me, okay? And first let's try to create a function that returns me this word counts. So here is how you write a Python function. It is called def. Def is not executed. It's only remembered this is a function. Create, create word dictionary, right? Dix, dix, DICT dictionary and file name. So read the file name and create the word dictionary. So file name is coming, will be coming. And all of these, I'm going to remove the make tabs. That's a part of the function. Everything under the function has to be also indented. Okay, so let's see now, right. So here is everything inside is the function. But now the file name will come, it will do this calculation and it will return me this. So I need to now execute here now, call that function. So then I will print it, so let's see. The function will return at the end of the day. Oh, there is another word count it will create and it will do this calculation and it will return word count back to whoever calls. Return word counts, it's returning. And here I'm going to call word count, word, word uh, counts. I'll just call it X, I'm just, making the variable separate so that you can see that space this is the file name and this is the function i'm going to create word dictionary and this is the file name i'm directly giving him the file file name and i'm expecting a word dictionary from him word counts or words, I call it, doesn't matter. It's just a name uh, or I can call it word counts. I want to make sure that uh, this variable is the one returned by him and that fun uh, by this function, I call it that. Return the map, the uh, dictionary. word and counts in their counts, word counts. So what I have done is that I have created a function. If you give it a file name, it will apply our logic, read the file, and by the time, see, they gain with file name, this is a Pythonic way. At this point, when this block goes out of scope, this file is automatically closed. So this with FP is valid only up to this and then this function. So the way Python program works is that first it will import, then it will define what is the meaning of the function. 
it will remember Python co compiler will remember. At this point, it will call the function because it can, you have to put this function before this. Otherwise, it will not know that, hey, there is a function, this is how you run. This is the definition. And here you print it out. This is the same result you got. Any questions so far about function? Okay, so now I'm going to later pass these as an argument. But before that, if you will notice often the Python codes usually have this. Python name People like to write Python usually always begin from this main function. This is how you write it usually. This is where the world begins for Python. So essentially up to this point, nothing is executed. And by de de default, there is a name, it's called main. Then this is where starts thing executed. It will be executed, it will be true because it's a main function and it will execute this, print it out. Let's see, that's how it goes, right? So let me show you why. Now, let me step you through the process of debugging, how it goes. So here you are here. If you put F8 here, step over, it will just execute that statement and it will come to the next one. Let's do F8 here, step over, you see? It, when they are executed everything and you already have a dictionary. But suppose I did instead of that, I'm going to rerun it. And instead of step over, um, step over, let, let me see, no. Right, I removed the breakpoint here, I have to do it again. Okay, so here, if you do step, over it will execute the function if you do step into then it will go inside the function that is f7 here so you see i did step into it is going here so f7 it's if i i did again f7 this is going into the python standard library how to create this pattern uh and step out is i think f shift uh, f shift f8 it just comes back uh so here i should do again over because otherwise it will go into these functions individual. And here a file is being opened and this is how it's going line by line, you see? Going through the calculation and you can see these variables. So that is about the function. <clears throat> so if you guys, it depends on what you guys think, I can either go for uh, a basic thing about probability or linear regression or you guys want to see how I put this function in a class, create a class and I import a library out of it. What do, and then implement something that it can tell about the word dictionary, number of unique words, number of words, number of repeats and so on. What would you guys like? Oh, uh, would you be continuing this in the next session, like next week? Yeah, or... continuing. Uh, if we do not do now, I'll be continuing next session. But then I think it would be good, right, if we continue in the next session, so that if we want to go and check and come up, with, if you have some doubts, we can come back Great. to you, right? I, I, that's what my thought. Let's sure. see what others say. So, yeah, uh, let me come in front of the camera. Yeah, so let us, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. So I can come back in the next class and create a class out of it and how to import the class. And you can have your own, you know, libraries then. Uh, that and um, yeah so probably we'll stop here and I will actually mail you this code so I owe you a few things Neil are you there okay uh, okay so that's that's good so some people want to continue in the next class so let's go a little bit into um, linear regression. So, and how do we do that? And this is going to be about Jupyter notebook, how to use it, how to do step by step. 
and explain the concepts of linear regression. So we saw last time that we have this data set and we need to fit a straight line somehow and also examine the data. And let me give you an idea about it, you know, slowly, because that's something very important concept. Okay, so let me share my screen and tell you a little bit about Jupyter Notebook. <clears throat> yeah. So, share my screen. Share, okay, great. So now I'm going to stop the pie term here. I did control C. So then I have a folder I have created for you. Uh, probably you can, I don't know if you can, oh, my screen is not showing up. Share screen, share, okay. Great, you can see. So I have stopped that and I'm going to a folder, Jupyter. Okay, so here I have a bunch of markdowns. So in these markdowns, I am going to go through <clears throat> a few notebooks. These notebooks are essentially, you can execute Python codes and they are written, they have this extension IP NYB. So in order to view them interactively, you can actually play with Python as a scientist. So you have to install something called Jupyter Notebook and I will show you how to do that. So once you, suppose I install, it's very easy, install, pip install Jupyter Notebook, I'll send you a link. And I think I did one, but I'll send you again. I run this. It's like running a web server locally. Immediately, this thing shows up on my browser. So now, I have prepared some lectures. Is it about, and then I execute. So this is about probability distribution. Maybe not this one. I go back again, three. Okay, so I want to say something. This is about linear regression. This is what we will do, go step by step, paste each command one more time independently and create a new Jupyter notebook. I think I have mailed you this. I would give you like about five, seven minutes to acquaint yourself with what I have mailed. Neil, did you mail this? I, I, I think you have, we have mailed it to you. <clears throat> you should take a look at them quickly and I'll be actually executing this line by line and walk you through. Uh, so one thing I want to say that in 2017, 16, also in 18, regression is the most commonly used machine learning techniques. And that's what we are going to do. We are going to take a data set and analyze step by step and go through it. And if you do not have this, uh, I, we did mail two days ago, let me know, uh, Neil will mail it. And I want you to look at this for a couple of minutes. I'll give about five, seven minutes break, and then I'll complete this data science experiment. And we'll do like a data scientist, step by step, we'll go through. Uh, so I'll be back in about, about five or seven minutes. Uh, I'll take a quick break and then we'll, finish this assignment. Uh, okay, I, I can show you the Kamal here. Just one yeah. quick thing. Mm -hmm. So this uh, notebook is just like any kind of editor. So you have uploaded all the documents there so we can access that, right? Am, am I right? Yes, yeah, so it is like a document, but it is okay. an, a, what it happens, think of it like a web page. You write okay. a code and execute that code goes to a server and it gets executed and the results come back to your web page. However, that Jupyter Notebook has to be running as a server on your machine. If you, and, and that server can be run on by anyone locally. So that's what I'm doing, one Jupyter Notebook. It's a server, web server sitting on my machine and these pages are interactive. The codes are being sent to the Python 
gets executed and the results come back to the web page. So you mean to say I need not install any, it's like a cloud, so I need not install any, uh, any application. Let's say for example, like if, even if it is Java, I can just write the code there, it will get, yeah, I send it to Jupyter, so, so it will execute and give me the response. Right, so some, usually, some, Usually, kind of stuff. every program can, every language can be written. Python okay. R is very uh, is interactively, uh, you know, okay. Okay. Done. not all. Okay. And you can show nice plots, visual, and you can do even remotely. If you guys want, very you know, later I will actually install a Jupyter Hub that many people can install with their own accounts. But I would prefer that this is something you can install. I'll send you links, and you should have it on your machine. And this okay. is very lightweight. You can play with it while taking a flight from Bangalore to Delhi, say. It can run locally on your machine. You don't need any internet. You can do your analysis, think about it, plot it around. This is your data you know, tool. So we will step by step after seven minutes break, go through this okay. exercise of how a data scientist would analyze advertising data. It is one kind of data. There are many kinds of data. We'll look at it later. Okay. okay, sure, thanks.
Okay, guys, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> I want to give you a quick idea about uh, Jupyter Notebook, just so you know, so that uh, you can install it. The way it works is that it's on your own computer. Everything is in your desktop or lab window. So what you have is a server running here, Jupyter server on your desktop, Jupyter server. So you have then, it shows you a web page and you can do it remotely too. So when you run a server, go into a folder and type the command Jupyter Notebook after you install it. And whichever folder you go into, say folder, and you'll see a bunch of files, I think P, I, P, Y, N, B, and so on. All these notebooks will show up as Jupyter Notebooks. And you click on it, it will open another tab, and it will show you the notebook. The way the notebook works is that you hit a command here. There are two types of cells, comments or commands. And you can choose here what type of language you are using, R, Python, a few of the languages, not all. <clears throat> this cell type is of two types, cell type, cell type. One is called markdown, that is for writing comments. One is for executing. So when you execute, the, result, the command will be executed like a sequence for that cell and the results will show up at the bottom. So you can interleave comments, markdown cells and command cells. This is easy to learn some programming or analyze data, have everything together as opposed to production kind of um, environment where you have system running day and night and you cannot see. Not only that, if you install a Jupyter server on your machine, if your IP address is visible, then I can remotely access all of it. So what happens is that every time you execute a command here, the command is sent to the server, server calls the language binding, gets executed, sends it back, and it pastes it. It's essentially a, your own interactive web page sort of thing. So, uh, so the, this is, uh should not be used in the official purpose. It's only for the learning purpose, if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, you can use it for official purpose as a data scientist. It may not be for production, but okay. you are employed as a data scientist, and mm -hmm. you are told, come on, go and analyze this data. Tell me the story okay. about this data. So then, in front of your boss, most likely you will use Jupyter Notebook, get everything ready, and he might say, come on, this value that you are using doesn't make sense. Can you do this? then you can quickly change it and then show him, oh, look at that, this is how it will be. It's a very quick interactive way of doing something, proving a no, concept. But, 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 but at the end of the day, it's data which will be playing around, right? So uh, that those data will also be exposed to the Jupyter, right? Yes. The, uh, external server. So yes. that's uh, like, that may be a challenge, right? If I'm not wrong. Like, ah, so I will show you now how to pull data, how to pull data remotely, how to read that I'm going to show you. Actually, okay. you'll see the okay. power. Okay. Plus, what if data is from the internet? Maybe you put it in your favorite server, you know, and you want to access it while when you are in New Delhi over the internet, or maybe you want to carry it, or maybe you want to share with all of you. In order to do our calculations, Python has some beautiful libraries. They are suitable for some calculations. One is called SciPy, Scientific Python. It's just a package we will have to install on our machine only one time, okay? And then NumPy, they make arrays, tables, manipulation very easy. And I'll show you. Then matplotlib, matplotlib. Beautiful plots, graphs, you can plot and you can learn. So these things, Put down in your resume when you do it because this you will see in job specs again and again 
sci-fi non-fi maplotlib and pandas they are very similar this is for libraries random number generation some calculation it will do for you call the library <clears throat> numpy is suitable for storing large matrices and calculations arrays python structures arrays and tables that's what data scientists want right for plotting pandas is for making very nice smart queries on tabular data sets pull that out uh, you know by name row name column name and so on and now, yeah sort of go ahead yep yeah so for python do we need anaconda environment hmm. for me. anaconda is more of a uh, yes they come with anaconda you can install without anaconda but you can they can come with anaconda also python has this all of these package system anaconda is one of the popular ones you can install via anaconda okay uh, in uh, uh, jupiter can we also debug our programs yes you can debug but not like an ide like i showed you step by step but you can debug it will show you where the error is and you can play with it and then fix it yes okay. and i will make some error right now actually when i show you okay so what i have done i have prepared a notebook for you guys but i am not going to just show you i am going to actually create a new notebook and fill in the same information step by step and walk you through the story how does it sound so that's what i'm going to do so that you can see the process i have uh, typed yes jorindo yeah. short question yeah so yeah. like uh, before jupiter how was uh, the data science was used to present the data like i mean just want to know about the yeah. history mm -hmm. i mean if so, there was no right so data scientists used to use r right so r was again command line type thing you type in the command like a shell and do things very boring very difficult to analyze plots then came r studio this is the id for r studio i will show you next time how it is also useful and i am going to show you the same thing also in r studio and also in python jupyter notebook both these are statisticians develop this open source language r and r studio is the id helps you analyze and this is all free software you can also write your own library and submit it this is how you used to do then after data science became popular internet became popular people started developing this jupyter thing more before data science these things were not existent much it was more painful and the most painful i have seen a language called sas uh, not the sas job i think there is another sas term uh, there is a language called saas i think very painful pages and pages of print out you have to look which is so boring and difficult that's how it used to be done okay okay thank you yeah, yeah. any other question there is no silly short questions ask as many as you want because uh, this is good thing we should yeah <clears throat> okay so let me now start with jupiter and i am going to make mistakes and i want to make mistakes so that i want to make you feel we are working together okay i have run jupiter notebook on a folder where i had a bunch of jupiter notebooks here i'm going to share my screen now um share the screen share the whole screen great okay so i went to a folder kulu academy jupiter notebooks i have these ip y and b yeah ip y and b uh, i even have r markdown which i will show you later um uh, and then i ran it this server jupiter notebook and it says port 88 is already in use trying another port so on uh, kishori kishori yeah. the system is not loading for me uh, i am not sure for others everyone oh, okay. can see the screen yeah we cannot share, uh, see the sorry. screen oh yeah. yeah let me sorry about it yeah uh, let me see entire screen share let me see let me see oh something is funny okay let me see Okay, great. Now it comes. 
Uh, so <clears throat> you should see now. So now, uh, guys, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So I should just uh, look at my other screen. Then I, I forget sometimes. But anyhow, you see, I went to a folder called Jupiter Lewitt Academy, and I have a bunch of Jupyter notebooks. I have even put some image file data file here folder. So there I go and type the command Jupyter notebook, which I have installed, uh, which you can install on your Windows machine, Linux machine, Mac machine. And then the moment it says I'm starting this, so let let this screen be there. We don't care about it. But what it does, it opens up another web page. <clears throat> let me do it again, just to make sure. I do Control C to sit down, uh, shut it down. Again, I'm doing Jupyter Notebook. Automatically, it takes me to this page. You see, localhost port number 8889 Cree. And I am interested, these are my Jupyter Notebooks. You see this sign symbol. Uh, let's go to three. Okay. This hopefully is the linear regression thing. It's yes, linear regression thing. So now I want to actually create a new notebook and I'm going to copy things over from there. First, these are just, these are cells, you see? This is a cell, this is one chunk. You see this blue line on the left? This is one cell, green. That is one cell, blue. You see these cells? These are results. So cells are of two types. The one shaded one is of type. This is how you can go. Go to the cell menu, cell type, code type, markdown type. That's what it, this is. This is something different. We do not use it here for now. Code type mark and you can switch it. Say so if I want to add here a new cell, I go there, click on it either below or above, insert, you see? Cell above or below, below this cell, here. Now I can type here, print, hello in Python. How do I execute it? Shift, I have to do shift enter. This is what I have to do, press. Then it should give me the results. Shift enter, does it do anything? Let's see. Oh. It did not send a print thing to me. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so shift enter. Hello world. So now run. For some reason it doesn't show me. Okay, let's see three plus four. Does it do anything? It doesn't show me any output. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, will it show in output section 254? Oh, here 254? Output yeah. section. Will uh, it show in that section or it should uh, be? It should show right below. For some reason, okay. these kind of statement, I don't know why it's not uh, showing, but we'll see that if that. It essentially shows this I'm loading some data. Uh, oh, I see. So there is something funny going on. Then it says that saving file. Uh, let me see first. So is it Python 2 or not? Python 2, stop the kernel. Uh, kernel type, Python 3 maybe it is, Python 3 probably. So you can switch the Python version, you see, go to kernel, change kernel to Python 3. <clears throat> Let's see how it behaves. Let's load the data and see. Hmm. It's not getting the data. Uh, let's see. Is it because it is in interfering with the previous one? I might have two of them running. Yeah, I have several of them running actually. Uh, recommendations, okay. Okay, great. Let's start it again. Um, yes, let's start it again. I want to make sure I kill all other Jupyter notebooks. Yeah, because it was giving me an error. It says that there is already one running on it. Yeah, so let's see if this error. 
trying another port. Let's see what it says. Um, right. Okay, great. Here you see. So I think I was running another several of these Jupyter things. Okay, so I will. So what I did, I created a box below and made it sure that it is of type code and executed it. You got seven. Let's see print hello. Right, run. Let's see. Uh, usually to run one cell, not the main thing is shift enter. Hello. Right. Okay. So let's change this cell type to markdown. It's useless. It doesn't do anything. That's all it's printing. It is not a code. Now, to remove it, I don't know, you go to edit and then say delete cells, delete it. Let's go through this. I wanted to write this. So you click on this cell. If you do shift enter, it's formatted nicely, you see? So let me click again and see. Introduction to linear regression. You see, wherever you put this has, it means ha headline. The more you put here, it becomes lower. You see, smaller and smaller and smaller it can become. Oh, there has to be a space. This is called markdown, and this is used by almost everybody now. This is a global standard. You should adopt this. You see how it becomes smaller and smaller, the number of hashes you put, or pound sign, they call it. And table is done in this way. Vertical columns, same number. This is to avoid a complete empty space. This is double star is for, I think, italicized. See, it creates this italicized and bold, probably bold. You see how this table is made. And these lines, these lines are essentially coming to this line. Motivation, why are we doing this? This is to list. If anything you start with this hyphen, dash is a list. That's it basically. That's how we do. So then I inserted another one to show you the importance of regression in a machine learning technique. How did I do it? I click on it. See, this is to show bold, underscore, underscore, they have to be stuck together though, no space, okay? Uh, no space here, no space, join it. And you see, I wrote it like a HTML page. And I am in the image folder, as you saw, I have an image folder and I have this thing put there. And I shift, enter, voila, I get this chart. So this makes it easier to explain concepts in data science, you know, so you can explore something. All right, so far so good. Shall we start another piece where the actual? So <clears throat> first, I'm going to create a new file maybe, new notebook, say Python 3, I'm going to create. Oh, this is Python 2, it's running. I don't know about this. Let's go with Python 3 for now. Python 2 for now. Uh, let's see what happens. So I'm creating a new one, you see? Untitled, so I can put a name probably here. I can call it class, class lecture, during class. Rene, uh, you know. If you go to my other tab where I have the list, you see, there is a Jupyter notebook is being created. It's also running on the other tab. So here, I'm going to look at, this is the template. We don't care about what we are doing. Let's use it, the other tab, as a way to learn. First, some, the, I need to use pandas. Here I'm importing, remember the regular expression I'm import, I was importing like import re. Here I don't want to write, I, it is a short form, as panda. That means take the whole pandas as a pd. This is a short form. This is for numpy, matplotlib. Uh, and there is a stat model I need for statistical calculation. Seaborn is more of a beautiful plots. These are, you stick it in front of everything, then it will just work. This is double, it's unnecessary. Um, so this is the unnecessary plot. So this is a recipe we need in the first kind of cell. Let's copy it and use it because we need to use these libraries. It, 
shift enter so it automatically that it loads the libraries there is nothing to print these are just loading libraries for python like we did in our program right pycharm so now somebody says there is some data sets let's understand the data set let's do, like, take a look at a, some data set so uh, advertising data i'm going to say oh uh, let's write about that let's understand data markdown let us load and examine our data I mean, you will take your boss, take it to your boss, and say, "Yeah, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing." He might suggest something, and you'll enter. Now, I am going to re get the data. This is already on the internet. Somebody, some great soul, has put it, which we are thankful in this website. So let's look at this. Where is this data coming from? I'm just showing you how data is nowadays. People store. You see, this is coming to my file folder, local folder, and I'm going to open it on my Excel, a Linux based LibreOffice. Oh, okay, discard recovery, okay. Cancel. Okay, here is what I'm loading the data, you see. Um, here is the data, TV, radio, newspaper sales. There is this extra column, I'm going to use it as an index column. But so this is essentially information about expenditure in TV, radio, and newspaper in millions and amount of sales you got for various companies. See, 200 companies, 201 because it's, uh, yeah, 200 companies. I want to now do some calculation. My question is, what, what do we want to answer? But let's see. This is the data I'm given to. What can I do with it? So instead of, see, it's on the internet. Instead of reading and downloading, I can straight pull from the list. Jupyter Pandas has the ability to read something off the internet and says, use the first column as the index column and show me the top few. See, it is not only pulling the data, it loaded into a variable data and it is showing me the head first few. Maybe you may want to n equal to 10. It's up to you, say. Okay, so what? So you have got an idea. So you have data about these three media, medium of advertisement and sales from 200. So now your boss, let's see what have I signed. So what's the question now? What are the data points? So TV data, radio data, newspaper data, sales. So now, at the very least, you should know what on earth your data is about. Is it in very large number, small? So in order to do that, you use something called data describe. Pandas, this is the beauty of Panda, you see? Panda reader, it's a Panda data frame. Pandas, so it can automatically do it for you, describe. Which otherwise you will have to calculate if you write code. All right, what does it say? You see, it nicely took and described each individual things. So it says you have 200 of each of them. There is no missing data. For TV, the average is 147. This is 23, 30 sales. Standard deviation is the lowest in newspaper. This is the minimum, minimum up to zero sometimes. So they really spend less some some companies. Sales also very low. This is the top uh, 25 percentile, 50 percent median. This is the 75 percentile and maximum. So this gives you an about the data, the ranges and values. Any question for so far? This is just to see primary scouting around the data. Is it making sense? Is there anything for me to do? That kind of thing. It just summarizes all the 20. This mean is based off all the 20. <clears throat> Let's look so, at the so, media. So these are the inbuilt inbuilt <coughs> functionalities. We will say right? yes, yes. So we 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 are not customizing anything, but by default we can get all these things. So we just yes. need to know and what all are available in that. Yes. Okay. And that is the beauty. You read the data in a second. Yes. With CSV, yes. yes. You got yes. the idea yes. about the snapshot of the data. Right. Right. Got you. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Yes. Yes. These are the uh, Jupyter methods, right? Handy methods, correct? Ah, 
or a python handy method these are all python methods right python methods but jupyter is enabling you to do it on the fly without writing a lot of code in the ide this is like a, so yeah jupyter is enabling you to write uh, run the python plots graphs calculation on the front end so jupyter is like your ide now interactive okay. ide okay yeah and you should use it because you see think how i am able to explain to you without writing code imagine if i had to write do a lot of very hard to understand here i'm running a code voila and the results are right here okay no i don't have to open a file it's already like a report i am making for you you know i don't need to do anything even great what else yes. we got yeah so now we should always look at something called box plot histogram and scatter plot i'm going to explain what it means uh, and these are statistical Hi, count go ahead yeah so uh, from this output count mean and standard deviation right Mm -hmm. uh, for, for the data set we have what we are actually determining based on the standard deviation mean and uh, uh, standard deviation and mean actually mm -hmm. yes so let me <clears throat> go to the board and show you something so let's try to understand what each of them are and how we do calculate it right uh, just a quick recap so that you know and there are a few other things I want to mention So as you know that for we have TV, radio, sales, and newspaper. So let's focus on one thing because it's producing all these numbers for each of these types. Let's say you are only given TV data, right? TV data. Let's look at when we compute the value count. It's about 200, right? We know because every row has a TV data. <clears throat> then we need the mean. And let's say this TV data was like here. Essentially, I'm just writing it here. This we will remove it for the sake of simplicity. TV was say two, seven, four, eight, nine, ten, five. So the mean would be sum of all. 2 plus 7 plus all of them up to 10 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Instead of 6, let's say this is 6. In reality, in that data set, we have about 200. We have exactly 200. You'd calculate mean. So mean gives you an idea where in the middle it is. Okay. So a lot of machine learning, I'll explain to them. <clears throat> you should also know what is the minimum, smallest value. Here, the smallest value is two, which is useful too. It gives you the range. What if it is negative? Then you will be like, there is something wrong with your data set. How come you spend negative amount? This is strange. So this is what you would have to look at and think about your problem. That can it be negative? Maximum. <clears throat> Here, it happened to be 10. So that you know, if somebody has a, like a ridiculously large number, then you will ask, what's going on here? Something is off. That's how you would ask. You know. Let me see one more thing. Okay, great. I can see, yeah. So the data set uh, we have, it's a selling volume or what kind of data set we are manipulating here? So uh, the data set is that has for each row a company information. Uh, different companies, 200 companies information, how much they spent on TV advertisement, radio, and newspaper, and how much was the sales for that year? Okay. So, so that is the investment versus sales, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now you need to find out, we'll see after we look at the description, that where should I spend? My job will be to ask you, where should I put my money? Which one is gives me more money? Uh, more return, more profit for what kind of advertisement? Is it TV? Is it radio? Is it newspaper? I want to find out. So here means give you the average, uh, average, uh, in, yeah, average investment on a particular items, right? 
Yes, the mean here, when you look at PV, it only tells you what is on an average a company spends on PV. Okay. When you look at one mean for the PV, you know nothing about anything else. All it is going to, all you can answer is that what is the average expenditure of a company on PV? It does not relink it with anything else. It does not imply anything about is there a relationship with sales that we do not know. Similarly, if you look at the radio numbers, mean, all you know, on an average, how much does a company spend on radio advertisement? It does not tell you do companies that spend on radio also spend on TV mostly? Is it, if any of them expenditure for a company is high, is the other one also high? We don't know about those patterns. Okay. For that, we have to go to linear regression. So far, okay. you only know about TV in this case individually mm -hmm. and that average may not even match up for the same company the average may not mean anything to any company maybe some companies are closer to average some are farther down on one they can be all kinds of things there is no alignment about one particular company yet, yet. we do not know any relationship <clears throat> so we know minimum maximum that's all about the all 200 so now let's look at standard deviation so you might think that, is there a variation from company to company? Mean gives you on and how much do they spend? What if everybody spends exactly the same amount, then mean will be the same number, right? Say if everybody spent here, this mean would be some, whatever that number it is here, say five point something, maybe everybody spends five point something exactly, then mean will be the same number. But I also want to know, is there a difference from company to company? And that's where you do standard deviation. Standard deviation will be, I cannot calculate it right away, but I can tell you how you can calculate. Whatever the mean is, say, let's call it X. You do one by one, say two minus X mean, then so on, and then minus square, and then so on, as there are six of them, six. So square each number from the mean, sum them up, divided by the number of points, take the square root. That will give you the standard deviation. In our data set for TV, um, 85, 85. For TV, it is 85 in our data set. Uh, for radio, it is something like, uh, oh, at 14. So that means in radio, they spend, standard deviation is, does not vary too much you know, somewhere around the mean. So this is how you can look at it. Radio, the mean is 23, 23. And you have some people going up to say 27 because 14 plus 23, or you can be as little as say nine. For TV, it's uh, mean um, is 147, 23. Oh, 147 and 70, 147 and 85. So yeah, 147 is the mean for TV. That's high, a lot more than 23 on an average, and it can go up to 85 plus minus. So it can go up to 85, it can go all the way up to something 212, something like that. Uh, yeah, 40, 12, 22 something, and you subtract 85, whatever it becomes like, say 40, 45, 40, 80, 60, right? Uh, 62 or something, it can go up to this. So there is a huge variability, you see? All the way from 62 to 222 million. On radio, the spread is nine to 27. This is what standard deviation tells you, how much spread there is. So that means the, the number that we are seeing now, right? Two to two and 60 something. So those should be the maximum and minimum, right? Like just to understand, uh, I see. ideally. Yeah, <clears throat> no, they are not maximum and minimum. Uh, maximum and minimum will be over here somewhere, slightly more. Okay. okay. Yeah, maximum and um, it's an um, extreme, right? Then you will not be able to, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Kishori, uh, is, it is, is uh, standard deviation uh, depends on the value of mean or there is some uh, calculation is we are going to find out if there is any diversion, if more than this, it will go a negative impact in the business or if it go right. means comes down below, it will be positive or something like that. Right. 
I will, yes, that is a good question. <clears throat> so I will produce an example, few example. You will see that the means are the same, but standard deviation changes. I'll give you some examples now. So, but, so what we have done here, okay, standard deviation, then 50%, 25% and 75% quantile. How to calculate, I'll give you an idea, then we'll jump to that. I'll answer your question. It's again six, 11, say 10, say. One, two, three, four, five, six. 50 percentile is always, uh, right. Always look at the ascending order, order the numbers. So here, two, after two, what, six, right? After six, what's the next number, four? Seven, 10, 11. Twenty-five percent will be from this side. Twenty, you come twenty-five percentile, whatever the value is. Fifty percentile will be come to the middle. It's about average of this. This is where it is. So this is what it means. So twenty-five percentile means your value, you are that value, so that twenty-five percent of the numbers are below you. So uh, and. Let me take another example. Let me take a number with 10 numbers, you know, count numbers, how to do it. It's important. This, and I'm, I'm gonna show you how to interpret that with box plot. Let's pick numbers, seven, three, five, two, six, nine, one, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. 11, okay? I want to compute 25 percentile. First, in these things, what you do is that order them. So one comes, two comes. Uh, oh, so we should do one thing, just to make things more interesting. Uh, let's make it nine. <clears throat> two, three is there, four is there, five is there, six is there, seven is there, nine is there, nine is there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is there anything missing? Yeah, a three is twice, right? Three is twice, yes. Okay, thank you. Three is twice. So when somebody says, so first order them, okay? 50 percentile means, or median also exactly it happens to be, same as, go all the way half. One, two, three, four, five. This is where 50 percentile means, or median. Because it happened to fall in between kind of two numbers, you take the average, 4.5. However, if there was another number, say 11, it would be, then it would be five, because five would be the middle, right? There would be 11 numbers and it would be the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and that's the middle. So if it does not become, if it's not odd number, if it is odd number, the middle guy, if it is not odd number for 50%, you take the average of the two. Okay, just make it, yeah, odd, it's interesting then. So this is your 50 percentile now, five. What about 75 percent? Yeah, about here, right? Uh, I don't know, about here it will be, somewhere. Somewhere here. I'm hoping you have a lot many more points so that it falls. What about 25? 25 percent of here would be somewhere here. Some, and, and this is also median. Now, you should remember as a data scientist that median and average are both a measure of where the middle point is on an average. But there is a property of median, even if this is like 1 million, this number, instead of 11, it doesn't matter, still five. But in the average case, you will be like adding that number and divide it by six, it will blow up. So you should say that average is more susceptible or it can be a victim of bad numbers sometimes. Too small or too large, it is affected. Median is sometimes preferable. It is very robust. It catches the middle point without being deflected by those extreme large numbers. Any questions on that? It's very important to know that. This is why median is preferred sometimes because it automatically filters some non, uh, unwanted noise. <clears throat> so, so far so good. This is, we got, that's why we need to look at it, these things. But wouldn't, isn't, would it not be nice 
instead of this, somebody gave me a plot like this. Uh, market 25, about this. It's the maximum, this is the minimum. This is about 25%. This is about 75%. This is about median. It would be nice, right? It gives you an idea that most of the things are varying around here. There are a few, a little bit, it's called box plot. So this gives you an idea. Are the numbers like all over the place or things? Let's look at two box plot examples. Suppose I have another box plot of the some other data. So what does it tell you? If you look at side by side, the medians may be closer. Maybe the maybe here I'm going to make it look like this. You can by looking at this box plot, you can say, well, the average mean is lower for this kind of sales, but also their variability is a lot narrower. It's a very narrow range. Some could be as narrow as this. Very narrow range. And there are a few crazy ones, two extremes. This is why statisticians use this called box plot or data scientists. It gives you a quick idea about where the data is. And I'm going to show you how to plot. But before that, I have a question. I will show of an explanation about how does mean and standard deviation uh, work on that. So let's get that done first. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to figure out now Not shared yet. <clears throat> Something stops there again. Okay, great. So now to answer Shorov's question, I would really like to first make a pandas data frame so that I can show that. So let's take some number. Okay. Um, okay, but before that, how do we create pandas data frame that we need to learn? an array of number, pandas, a data frame, we should see. Okay, so let's say we have an array of numbers. Two, three, 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 four. B equal to three point, they are also three, three, three point five, three, uh, 2.5, one, two, three, six numbers, six numbers. Okay, great. Okay, I'm executing it. Okay, so let's go back again. P-N-D-A-S, E-D, data, D-A-T, that, E-D, T-A. Okay, so now I don't, I forgot how to create the pandas data frame. This is how you do. Example, data frame. So it has the concept of data frame. So here, there are a lot of tutorials, you see. Pandas data frame, you should look up how, to, how they use it. You don't have to remember, it's just a practice, learn, uh, you know, I do not know now, say, say how to create one. I'm going to, okay. So here is, you see. So essentially you do data frame, PD, data equal to, NumPy array, so you can use it in NumPy, actually. That, that's one way of creating NumPy array. They are here, they are creating three NumPy arrays, and these are the columns. That is too complex, maybe we can use simple ones. I'll show you. Okay, so you see, this pandas data frame has this concept of column names and these rows. This is what it stores like that. So then you store the data, index, and columns. This is what you introduce. You give the data an index. So now let's look at an example here. So this is an empty panda data frame. It has nothing. No columns, no index. So here is one. Take the data and put it in data frame and it will print out this value. But name of the column is zero. But that's probably not what you want. You want to give a name. So this is how you put array and columns separately. So I'm going to put is the data and the column name in another array because I have only one array. 
<clears throat> or maybe two arrays actually. So let's see. So I'm going to do data frame. Yeah. So I have to give them as two, right? Uh, data equal to, I have to give both the arrays, array of arrays. Great. Let's see what I get. Okay, I got something. It did not do anything new, but I can print it for you. See, let's see what I get. See, that's what I got. This row one and row two. But look at it. I got these columns all over the place. So what I wanted is a transposed ones. Not, not this way. So, well, you can use it as, okay, let's see, how do I do that here? Here, you see they are putting every pair as blocks, columns. They like to do it in this format. So here is how you can do it. They like pairwise. So the pairwise would be, how do I put it pairwise? This is how I have to do it. An array of pairs. Here is the array of pairs. First is three. Second one is three. Okay. So again, here, three, three, three point three, three, again, then three point five. I'll keep going at it. Okay. I know that three, three. So this is very easy to uh, read from a file. The first ones are 3.5. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and take it as a time to think, uh, understand. Because sometimes I like when, uh, you know, somebody is doing slowly, then I can think. Let's see how it looks. This is how it looks. This is the row number on the side. And this is the column name, zero and one. They're not very good, right? First row, it's all three, three, three. And that would be, I will make the column names, column as two arrays. G, instead of zero, one, I call it A and I call it B. Oh, so I think it should be columns. It needs, uh, look at this now. So now I can say that describe. Here you go. Six, A also has six, particularly. This also has six, mean both are 3.0. Standard deviation is zero for A. But for B, it's higher, you see, because it, there is a variability. Right? Okay, so now I want to show you something interesting that is going to, I have decided to create this, but I don't want to type these eh, annoying things. So again, mean will be same, point two, it will be four, three, three, three point five, 2.5. But look at it, I will have to do this now. This is not preferable. I I would be tired of it soon. And I'll show you something about Python that you should use. 3.5. 3 uh, 2.5. Now I need the third column here. Name C. Here. And I want to do that. Again, I have to execute it because you see, if I execute this code block, doesn't mean that this will be executed. I have to go and do, look at it. Same mean, do you see the standard deviation? Of course, C is jumping up and down more. B is less jumping up and down. A is very steady. So even though you may have the same mean, standard deviation gives you within that data set, is there a variability? Sort of, did it help? Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. So <clears throat> now I want to make a box plot out of these values. Can I make a box plot? The question uh, for data frame like, uh, hello. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for data frame like, uh, it should be 
same number of rows and columns for both. Yes. Same number of arrows. Yes. You have to have the same number of uh, every data A, B, and C series, let's call it, have to have the same number. But one of the annoying thing about this data set is that I had to create manually, you see, 3, 3, 3, all these things. I really would not like to do it. There is a trick I want to show you now to create this. Can you import it from a file? Uh, you could import it from a file as well, like the one we did here, except yeah. the file was on the internet. But yes, yeah, we could have imported it from a file with this. I want to show you then, then. now that, that you talked about it, let's do it now. Let's import it from a file. Let me go to my screen. Let me go to my folder where I'm running things from. Or I can put it anywhere, but let me go there. Simple data. I can put it on a folder called data, I don't know, here, uh, simple data. Here, let me see. Okay. Uh, comma separated, doesn't matter how you like it. Uh, let me see, double space. Okay. You like comma or tab? Comma, maybe. Right? This is how I put it in a file called simple data. It's in the full path of this. I'm going to load directly from there. Let's see. It's the same technique, you see. Except it's from a local file now. Let's see if I can do this describe. Um, so simple data. It's in my folder called data, which is already in the Jupyter where I'm running Jupyter from. I'm running Jupyter from here so I can access the data as a relative path. <coughs> Data, head, let's see. There you see, there is some error. So now, index column is zero. Okay, so it thinks that I have zero, one, two, three, four, zero, six, one, two, three, four, and so does it mean that it is reading, it is reading a few extra for me? A unnamed one BC, let's see what did I do? Did I screw up this? Oh, I know what happened. This is extra space, the extra commas I put. There you go. There you go. This is how you can read it from a file. Uh, but I want to show you another technique. I'm going to add another data frame to show how to use zip. <coughs> zip, so I'm going to insert a new cell below it. It's a code type. Uh, I want to say, I want to show you uh, how to use zip this is a good python skill. so you see it doesn't respond because it's a code type so i have to change the cell type to markdown type this is a comment i want to write see how to use zip so this is the cell i want another insert cell below and i want to <clears throat> those abcs are available to me so i'm going to do this for a in zip a, B, C, print A, uh, I don't know, X. You see, it put them line by line. Did you see that? It gets the first guy from A, first guy from B, first guy from C. Then in the next, first guy from A, B, C, a second, 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 third. So I am able to pull them like together, like, Column wise, uh, any questions about it? How I'm using zip? It is able to vertically combine all of them, all of these arrays to give me this array. 
Okay. Uh, surely we have yes. uh, like co column name as capital A B C, right? Yes. But but in zip we have used small letters. So does uh, does that uh, matter? No, uh, it does not matter because those column names I am giving to my data sets, right? And, okay. And and also these are I am doing these variables A B C here. These. So okay. these are we do not care about the data coming from this file. I'm commenting it out. Okay. All okay. we have is three variables, mm -hmm. and these are these could be anything. I may say y instead of b. I'll call it say y. But there will be a problem here. You'll see why. Well, you see this is how error is giving. Y is not defined because I just changed y here, so I have to do shift enter here so that these codes are executed. Right? Uh, is it clear, Kashubi? Yeah, yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. So you have to, if you change upstairs, make sure that you execute. But I think there is an option where you can execute all up to this point, something. You can play around with it and you will see that. It will say that execute all up to this so that you don't run into this problem. <clears throat> so here, now that I have Y after executing, I can use it zip. See? So now I'm ready to almost get into this format, right? So I need to put them together somewhere. I call it my data. My data in an array. In an array of array, my data here. And I'm going to say my data into an array you insert like this. My data append, append x. This is how you do it, my data. Let me show you how my data looks like. Print. Append is a way to add to the end of the array. And let me print my data at every step. You'll see that, you see, it's going on inserting. This append adds the last guy, keeps on adding up to this point. So now I have this structure, it's same as this, except this is tuple, like a, instead of square, it is like a, I don't know, round bracket. Let's see, it might work, it should work. Yeah, I mean, sure. not, yes. Yeah, Go so ahead. how's the how the zip helps over the data head? I mean, it's just to display the data in that format? Uh, zip helps you to, like, I had those three arrays, right? A, B, C. And mm -hmm. you saw how painfully I typed it in. Right. Line by line, three comma. This shows you how to put, quickly combine them. Okay, okay. So I mean, Otherwise, I'll have to manually do it. Right? This is a trick in Python, you should use it. Okay, it's group, group those columns into one and then get outputs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can combine uh, row or the corresponding column mm -hmm. values for each different row and then create that structure. Otherwise, you would have to do what I did painfully here, right? Right. Look it yep. up and write. Now I'm showing you. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. This technique, except, except, Got it. except I'm going to do. Instead of all this junk, painful junk. Yeah, Kishori. Yeah. Yeah, your voice is getting down. You need to be a little high. Uh, okay. To be How is it now? How is it now? It, it is better, yes. Yes. Okay. So here is, I'm going to replace it with, instead of all these unnecessary things, I'm going to call it my data that I have prepared here. You see? This helped me get there quickly. And, and Kishori, it adds the, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Yeah, and it adds the parentheses along the data. I mean, why is it that? Because... Uh, could you explain again? Could you say again? Yeah, so it adds the parentheses with the data of each. Yes. Uh, yes, um, so that is interesting. So I'll tell you in a second. So you see, now I got the same data. I'm able to pull arrays of data and create it, right? So now there is a difference here. There's a difference between it. This is called a tuple in Python. Uh, print. Let me take a new cell. Okay, this is a, how to create a tuple. And I'm going to insert below it two lines below. The first one I'm going to call it markdown. Oh, no. We give something else. Uh, cell type, switch to markdown, tuple. I'll call it Python tuple. Python tuple. Python tuple is a data values that are a pair or more, say. This is a tuple. 
all together. It's like XY coordinate, just like in geometry, you have done XY. It's like a tuple, like X, Y, Z. <clears throat> These are tuples. So Python has the ability to create pairs or tri triplets. So this is a tuple. So think about this data frame again. This data frame likes in each, it's an array. The first element of the array is the first data row value. So you have to have this, this, this. So it's essentially a tuple like this, you see. Square bracket is still an array. There is a difference between a tuple and an array, but they are very close. So it's okay, like it, it will accept that as a tuple or yes, it, it will automatically convert into array it, as, for it, that one? Yeah, for that purpose, it will automatically convert. And that is the, you know, thanks to those guys who implemented those library, you okay. know, pandas. Say if you, there could be libraries where you may have to look up. It may not automatically interpret tuples as little short arrays. Uh, it will create trouble for you. Uh, and that is something more of a uh, people, those who design software, they probably thought about it that people may want to do this. I should accept both tuple and uh, short arrays. Okay. So okay. each little array, for example, here, this little array corresponds to this guy, right? This guy corresponds to this second row. This, guy. and that's why we need this tuple concept so that it makes our life easier for that. And this is a zip folder. You see, zip means it is able to parallelly stitch together arrays of equal length. Let's see what happens if one of them is of not equal length. It has more elements. What happens? Let's see. Does it do anything? It simply ignores the last guy. Let's say I add another one, three. Oh, it still ignores. Let's make it here so that it's equal, five. I expect it to now, you see, the last line showed up. So that means zip pulls the first guy from the first list, then the first guy from the second list, first guy from the third list. Then once it's done, then it goes and first guy from the, you know, second guy from the first list, second guy from the second list, second guy from the third list. Then it goes on the third element row by row. And that's why you have this Panda frame format. It's, you see a lot easier. Now I want to know about the A's. You see how easy it is, dot A. You see how it gave me all the dot A's. These are name dot A, dot B. So it's easier for me to manipulate, right? So I can compute a function on it. <clears throat> so let's see what happens. Uh, that dot a, if I multiply with a number scalar, three, say what happens? So you see, it got multiplied by three. So this is very easy to calculate. What about dot, dot that b, add it. You see, you are able to do vector addition together. So this is, you cannot do it ordinary arrays like that. Always, uh, you know, this is the, that is why we use pandas because it helps you calculate certain data very easily. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the idea of that. So I think we had got on, uh, the, a little bit, uh, I explained you. Now let's go back to our problem. Any questions so far? So far, we have gotten into data description, how to describe a data. Uh, uh, Kishori, uh, yes. after, uh, after we read a file uh, like we did here, so can we also update the data frame? Uh, you can update the data frame, you can modify, yes. It's just a variable. Okay. Hmm. So, so in case frame, we want to change a, a, a column, I mean a row, Yes. Or something with different values, we can do it. Yes, you can modify or add or filter even. That is the beauty of Panda that I want all rows where the X A column has more than value three. You can make those kind of queries. Okay. Without having to load in an SQL database and making a query, these kind of things. 
Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so this is very convenient for us. So yes, so let's go back to our data thing, TV radio. We got a description of the data. Then I would like to do histogram, right? Like I said, for sales, I want to first look at sales. Sales, what I want to do is that I want to make a histogram like the one I explained. This is the 25 percentile. The first, uh, this is a 75. These are the maximum and minimum, right? We'll see if it matches or not. Then these are the histograms of 200. That means about one of them, there are two guys that are between zero to five. So about from five to 10 million, about one company here, another one is about six, one is about seven. This is the distribution. Look at it here. Around 12 is where most of the companies spend around that amount of money. And this is the third plot shows how densely the points are on a line. And this you can make, I'm going to show you how, how to make this plot. First of all, as you know that, I want to first talk about sales. How is the sales going? Forget about TV, news and radio and all. Let's look at sales data. So what I'm going to do first is do the box plot, the one I explained. How do, and I want to make three plots side by side so that it gives me a good indication. How do I do that? So PLT is the library that we imported before. Uh, here, PLT, see, matplotlib, by plot. That's what I imported, I will need that. What I'm going to do is that take this data set, the code, I'm going to copy and explain one by one what I'm doing. I am also look at this data, it's the same data set I'm holding. I did not change this data, you see? I, oh, here I use data, I have to re-execute because this data is now the new data that my, data. I have to re-execute this. So load the data again, that's the right data. Uh, and now let's add our code and let me explain the code. So here, PLT library, it shows that I need subplots, one row, three columns, and each of size this. These are something you just memorize once, okay? So then it gives you the axis. Because you ask for three plots, it will, of course, give you three axis here and the figure. So now you are going to feed the, you are going to make the first one, second one, and third one. Let's first comment these out why I'm doing it. <clears throat> First, as you know that data not sales, uh, maybe I can, yeah, data not sales, you see? Sales is the name of the column. So data dot sales will give me this sales data, essentially this column, last column. Let's see what I get. So I created a plot and sales. What did I get? Nothing, three empty plots because I didn't do anything. This helped me create these three empty slots. Now I'm taking the data. Now I'm going to rerun the command again. I'm working on the first block. Well, first I'm going to work on this, then the second plot, then the third plot. I call it a name variable. Then I'm going to called the axis, AX, it gives you three axes because there are three plots. Axis zero, I'm going to set the title of that figure, box plot for sales. Let's see what happens. See, I got this, box plot for sales. I got to this much, but I didn't do anything else. Then I'm going to say that, take my data, because these are the values, right? Let me print it out for you, what I'm printing. It's a sales value. This is the same sales value, 2210, 2210, and so on. It's a sales value, all 200, you see. It does not show 200 because it doesn't want to, that's why it says dot, dot, dot. It doesn't want to display too much. It becomes crazy. Uh, in fact, sales value, I would like to know actually more than that, data described, values described, can it do that? What's the average, what's the mean? I would like to know that. Oh, 
okay so it said something about mean mean we'll see that no it doesn't show that i'll find out how to do that <clears throat> but before that i have done up to this now i want to do is a box plot so the box plot you see i got this box plot but now i want to compare with what is the meaning of this box plot cell below i want to actually do that describe data describe to see if the mean median if this matches or not just to produce this one uh, here i'm produce, going to produce it for you okay let's see here so it's about sales this is the third column sales what is the median here median and 50 percent is the same thing 12.9 you see there is a red line box plot what about 25 percent percentile it should be about 10.37 and you see this box the first top and then it's the 75 percentile is 17.4 here you see that next this is the meaning of the box plot there is another one it shows you nice distribution that's called violin plot i'll show you next time it also shows you the histogram little histogram violin plots are like this i want to show you and get you excited about it you can show your boss nice images and interpret these are violin plots this is essentially box plot this gives you that this is where the maximum is it's like a plot side by side these are called violin plots this gives you an indication where the maximum guys are i'll show you next time how to do violin plot this will be essentially like this <clears throat> violin plot. so you see now how it makes sense now i need to do histogram it is probably going to show similar you see it's the middle guy so it's the second axis zero and this is one and i want to compute the minimum oh i forgot one more thing this shows you minimum and maximum does it match it for sales minimum is 1.6 probably 1.6 here maximum is 2.27 27 yeah 27 so now kashyapi mentioned that what if i could change the value maybe i could change the value maybe the first element i can change it to i don't know let's look at the data 22.1 22.1 and maximum we got is 27 for sales what if i make it 50 the first value I'll take and make it 50. Let's see how it looks. Does it become crazy? I don't know. Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to change the data point now. Data. Go back and insert a new cell above here. Uh, no. So that is, I'm going to give it to him. He can take it. No, no. This is a different, I'm just keeping that. You may need the examples, that's why here i'm going to use this here change the value of dap data dot sales the first value i want to print the first value of sales it's supposed to be 22 something uh, it failed it says it cannot get the sales data let's see why not Okay, sales, um, how do I get the first data point? I want to change the first data point now or increase that. Or maybe I want to rather multiply it by this data, maybe double it. So I doubled it internally. So Kashyapi wanted to modify it. So I should see everything double, right? Uh, the media maximum should be double, minimum should double, everything should double. Uh, and I'm going to plot it in another figure. Here, not destroy this. Uh, insert above. Okay, let's see here what I get. 
you see, I doubled everything. So 27 became 50 something. The mean got probably shifted from 12 point something to 24 so point something. Minimum also got up to four. So this is how I kind of doubled it. I could change it. So does it explain your question, Kashubi? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I was able to change it. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> So another thing I want to show you that very interesting fact, and you'll find it amusing actually. So look at this data described. What I'm going to do is add five to everything and run this code. So what I'm going to do is that data sales is equal to data sales plus 10,000, right? And right away, I'm going to describe the data. What do you see? See, sales mean has jumped because I have added to everyone 10,000, right? In fact, already I had doubled it. That's why you are seeing 20,000. But what happened to the mean? mean did not change at all or did change it, it changed the mean sorry i meant to say the mean changed but standard deviation did not change you see only things got shifted by ten thousand, but the spread remained the same so i want to explain this concept a little more on the uh, in the board actually And that is the important aspect of knowing it. Say I have two numbers, three numbers, say only three, four, and five. If I plot it, the mean is about four here. Variability is about three to five. One here, variability is one, say something. If I add 10,000 to each of them, 100 to each of them, it becomes 103, 104, and 105. So all it has happened is that it moved the, suppose the scale continues and on, somewhere it's 100. And all you have changed is wherever there is 100, 101, no, 100, no, 103. 104, 105. All you have done is shifted things here. It's still variability of one like this. So that's why standard deviation does not change, mean changed. Yeah. So anyhow, so I think uh, this is where I want to kind of uh, give you an idea. And there is a request that maybe we can pick it up now. Uh, you know, it's a good place to stop. In the meantime, maybe I should take questions. Otherwise, we will pick up next Saturday and I will give you home assignments to think about things. Any questions we want to take now? Have? Neil, are you there? Hi, Kishori. Yes. I have one question. Yeah, it's regarding the zip that he used uh, to uh, zip the three arrays. So it was done as a uh, tuple. So I just wanted to uh, know, like, uh, is the con concept of tuple the same? Uh, it will be uh, applied here also, like, uh, once a tuple is created, it, it cannot be modified, things like that. Tuples are more fixed, you are right. An array, so let's look at a tuple here. Tuple x, y, some value and array x, y, right? Tuple usually is fixed. It will remain as x, y. This can be extended to something else. I can put something else, do an append operation. I can extend it. Tuple should, is not kind of modifiable like that. Uh, is that your question, Nimisha? Uh, yeah, so yeah. here, uh, once we are using that zip, it is creating the data, I mean, it is creating it as a tuple. Mm -hmm. so 
when you were doing it manually, you were creating it as an array. Ah, yes, right, yes, that makes sense. That is because the pandas, whoever wrote the software, you can easily recast as long as those little arrays have the same number of elements. Probably they internally tried to convert it. You can because you can always take a list array list and convert it into a tuple. But there they will check that are they all of the same size. If they are all of the same size, they will be successful in converting into tuples of the same size, and they will actually plot it. So that is probably the guy who wrote the software. He made the inter he made that concession that you might do this. So this would make your life easier. Otherwise, you'll have to keep recasting them as tuples. That is more of a convenience of the software designer, his greatness. And in, also, when you create library, you should think how people want to use it. And accordingly, you should uh, do the conversion. These are implicit conversions. Uh, did it explain, Nimisha? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, does that mean that after using zip, we cannot modify the data? Because it is in a tuple. Uh, zip is essentially for creating. Zip is for this purpose. Zip itself will not create data. Zip creates an iterator. I'll tell you what it iterator means. I'm sure you have seen in other languages. Say I have a list a1, a2, a2 list actually. Let's do zip in two list. B1, B2. To B3, B4, no, B3, B4, B5, right? So this is one array, this is one array. Zip is essentially, what happens, you feed him A and B. What you can do is that you can always write for loop in zip, for A in zip. It allows you to do for, and that you can do only if this thing is a iterator. So you, it zip allows you to do this for loop. And in for loop, every time what it does, zip takes first loop, first iteration, it will pick for this value, let's call it x. It will do that, then it will do this. Second iteration, third iteration, it keeps on doing it. So zip allows you to do this. But what I do, because I am creating these tuples, I'm going on appending in my data, storing them. That is up to me, how I deal with it. Zip is only going to give me a list of tuples in each iteration. Did yes. it explain that, uh, Kaisavi? Uh, yeah, but uh, like we created an empty uh, list and we had appended it, right? Our yes. data. So uh, we cannot create a, a empty tuple and append it? Uh, no, tuple comes with a dimension. You cannot change it. Okay. Tuple is not the same as list. Tuple is like, say, think of it like a coordinate geometry x, y, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot have a coordinate called empty coordinate. That's why it's called tuple. By definition, tuple means two things together. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, and, and once you have a tuple, you specifically design what kind of tuple. In English or in math book, you will see n tuple, right? Mm -hmm. It could be five tuple. That means five at a time, three tuple, but they are not equal at all. Two and three, you cannot take a two tuple and make it three tuple by adding one at the end. Well, in programs, you can somehow manipulate and get there, but the concept is different. It's like saying 2D geometry is the same as 3D geometry. It is not very, uh, it is not designed for that. A list doesn't have any meaning of that tuple. You can add as many as you want. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jatinder, you had a question? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, is it tuple is a data type? I mean, kind of data yes. type in Python? Yes. yes. Okay. It's okay. a very fundamental data type. It helps you put together this tuple data, like you are doing, like I use, right? ABC. All mm -hmm. of them are from three different, it's a point in the data space. Got it. Got so it. I'm able to capture them together. Kind of might be data structure of keeping a data. Yes, together. Yes, okay. for each okay. row together, meaningful data yeah. together. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other question? So, and he, yeah, go ahead. And here, uh, is there any situation? Can we use any generators for? 
essentially that iterator, yes, it is based, zip is essentially a generator inside. So it has, it uses yield function. So it gets to the first guy, this guy, this guy, and it calls yields. So you get a generator out of it actually. In Python, iterators are implemented with these generators. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I have one question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, could you please come to open your pie chart? Uh, sure. In... Give me a second. I'll open that. That program you have done. Yeah. Uh, uh, on that uh, main, funs, uh, main you have right, right? Uh, under, underscore, underscore, main, main. Uh, uh, let me first open it and. Um, there. Yep, I'm getting there. So I'm going to go to my uh, PyCharm and open it. PyCharm. <clears throat> Give me a second, it will open up. So if PyCharm is loading. Okay, here I have. Rupesh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, here uh, if name equal to main, you have right, written. Uh, what it, is the oh, main? Oh, yeah, 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 I see, yes, yes. So this. Actually, without that, also code was executing, but why we keep this one? I see. So this is like the main function. And this underscore underscore name is a variable that every Python, when you run, it ex exists by default. Let me print it out for you. It's actually a built-in variable. In Python, you will see everything that is underscore underscore is a built-in variable, uh, inbuilt variable. Uh, let me run it again for you. Uh, and you will see, uh, maybe I shouldn't print all the, these are not required. These are distracting to us. So let's run it. You see main. So these are called, uh, uh, let me show you on a web page. These are called a list of variables you'll see in Python. Uh, they are, um, uh, in, In Python, they are used for certain cases. Advanced, you see, these are all inbuilt variable. There are a lot of them: strings, names, list, and they are used by the code. I see strings. So these are values that every Python variable has, and you can do certain things. For example, if you have a str function, you can uh, even iterator is like that. We'll get to iterator, and you will see these special variables are used. So in this case, because every, every program has this variable main, and because it's a if statement, it starts executing from there actually. It's a convention, this is like a main function. This is not going to execute anything. This is a function definition. It will see this, oh yeah, I see what it means. It doesn't do anything until you hit here. And all the people, it is a convention to write main, this at the end, why? See, I'm using this function. If I move this function above, copy and put it at the front, you will be in trouble because it doesn't, let's see, it doesn't know what it is, see? It's not defined. So Python scans from top to bottom and after scanning, you are saying that, oh, your name is, if you have this variable set to, main that you know and you start executing this is where the work begins so in case uh, so main thing is like when we write function then we will uh, uh, first write this main variable uh -huh. and then after we uh, call that function right yes so, so you have so to have go ahead say it again yeah, if we don't do this uh, even if we don't do this the code is executed 
so is it kind of a best practice that we have to follow so that others know that this is the starting point of the program or is it yes, necessary you are right this is essentially starting point of the program you could have some statements here all over the place here right but you don't want to do that you this you want to make the starting point of the program and i will also show you how to make command line options and how it will help you you'll see next time Sure, if you don't give this line, line number 54, still it will work, right? Uh, it will, line number 54, if you don't do that, there is an issue here. Let's try, okay? First of all, uh, you have to then put it this way. Make sure that it's executed. It will work. Yeah. Uh, but you always want to have a starting point, not all over the place, because you want to make sure your starting point should be such that all the necessary variables have been described. All the function definitions that you would use in your calculation are described. And that's why you want to do it at the middle, at the end. Uh, yes, you can, as long as you start from the end, it's fine actually. If you start everything from the end, you don't need to necessarily have mean. But you will have problem with some libraries. This is a way to say that this is the main function that you should execute. Because you may have several files, I will show you later. In libraries, you will have many files. Then you want only one file to start processing from, not everyone. Like in C or you know Java, you want to make sure that there is one main, not several mains. Yes. So so that, that means it makes it mandatory, right? So for, yes, in Java, like, we have the main method in the, uh, yes that is mandatory. Too. So yeah, yeah, main class mandatory. method. Right. So same way. This is something you should follow as a convention because you will see later when we add more things, this will become very necessary. This yeah, way of coding. Correct. When correct. you build packages and libraries. And uh, Kishori, uh, question related to this, and we are imported the re, re regular expression yes. library. Yes. So and we are invoking a function later on. So is it not we are importing it before and then we are executing it? I mean. Ah, uh, yeah. So here you or see. Or can we put it into the function definition? Uh, because, uh, I mean, are we loading it before it, the function is invoked? Yes. Or, so you see here, at the very top, I have imported. So library is already available to me. Then I define the function. I'm not executing. This is just defining the function. I'm using it. No problem, because I already have loaded it here. Okay. And I have, I'm using it in the function. So far I have defined function. And towards the end I'm using the, calling the function. Okay, but if we are not calling the function and we're keeping that import, so mm -hmm. I mean, and if this core program is executed, so it will, it'll, it'll, that it will that in the effect? It will not do anything. It will simply load the, import the library, define the function and do nothing. Let's do that. Okay, and, do and, and can we conditionally load into the function like? I mean, yes. if only the function executed, yes, yes, then yes, only yes, put yes, that three. Yes. So you okay. can do this as well. I can even load inside the function that when I need it. Okay. You know, I can try to do that as well. There is no harm. Yeah. Okay. In this case, it didn't do it, but it will still work when I do. Uh, when I execute it, you'll see. Uh, it's good to play around with it, with this. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, these things are important things. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. I imported it when I needed it. But right. usually it's a convention to import at the top. Okay, so is it not nothing related to memory leak or something like that? No, okay. Python does its own garbage collection things. Okay. Uh, it's not called garbage collection, there is... And, uh, and Kishori, uh, like yeah. here you have done like word counts equal to some two curly methods you are for a defining dictionary, right? Yes. So whenever we uh, want to use any dictionary, we have to do like this only. Yes. Oh. Uh, oh, by the way, I want to make sure. Yes, that is the way you use a dictionary. This has to do with regular expression. Uh, did I, uh, Rajesh, is that clear that this regular expression is not a part of the dictionary? It is just a regular expression for looking for patterns. Uh, but dictionary is a built-in facility here. This is the parenthesis. This is how you define. Uh, is it clear, Rajesh? Yeah, yes. Okay.
and if it's if you should put it like this, if it meant to be an array, this is the symbol for initializing an array. Square bracket. A dictionary, we can see in simple words, we can say it is a map, right? In uh, it is a map. It's a map. It is a map. It is a map. It's a hash dictionary. Yeah, key value map. Yeah. Yeah. It has no order. It has keys yeah. and values. Yeah. Also, sorry, could you please uh, explain maybe uh, maybe next class before like uh, some Python uh, structure like how to uh, create uh, how we relate package class and everything. I will. I will. Uh, that's that's what we will do uh, no, next class. How to create package? How to create class? How to import class in packages? And how to make command line proper programs? Okay, and how to arrange our codes in class and packages? Uh, yes, uh, yes, absolutely. I'll do that. We will extend our uh, word counting into a class, and it will do certain analytics on those words. Okay, so. Well, uh, any last question we can take? We have one, uh, one question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, we have opened this file here. Don't we have to explicitly close it in Python? Ah, so when you have this, Python has this interesting thing called, there is a word people call it, called adjective, called Pythonic way. Okay. This width open is very special. It is closed automatically here when the block is ended. You see where this comes? A lot of people would write open and then do calculation. Uh, but if you do with Python, then the moment it goes out of scope, it will be automatically closed. That's a Python, it's a Python style. Okay. Yeah, you can not do that. Just open a file handling and close it manually. But this keeps it clean because then you don't have to worry. It automatically, will, even if you forget, it will automatically close it. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much and we'll see you next week and I'll send you home assignments and these notebooks and how to install stuff. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.